Hey, good evening, everybody, and welcome to another show here on the Comic Art Live channel. It's episode 212, and tonight we've got a Hakes auction preview from their, I believe the, what is it, um, 240th, I think, is the uh, the auction number for Hakes. And uh, this time around, they've got a, a lot more art than uh, they've had in the past, and uh, it's some really great stuff. I think you're going to enjoy tonight's show while we preview the artwork. So let me bring in the team. Minus one from uh, Hakes tonight. We've got Alex, Kelly, and Todd. Good evening, gentlemen. How are you doing? I'm going? doing well. I'm uh, doing very well, actually. I had, uh, had a productive day, by and large. How about you guys? Productive day. Oh. <laughs> the way you thumb it up, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I just got back from some time off, so it was like uh, on the same day of losing an hour of sleep. So it was kind of like a whirlwind of. Uh, yeah trying to get caught up but. but we're working on you know we have the auction closing next week we're working on the may online auction we're working on the july catalog auction mm -hmm. uh, stuff is rolling in from you know, people should know by now all the different categories we offer like things are coming in from all different directions of different categories we're just trying to um coordinate everything different countries yeah different continents yeah yeah, yeah. So, well, that, that, so nothing's nothing's changed. It's always uh, it's always a busy day at Hakes. Yeah. So, sure. but hey, I had to ask you guys. Obviously, the three of you were at OEX, and uh, we didn't even get a chance to talk too much. But I think I talked more to you guys than I talked to anybody else, any other exhibitor or artist that was at the show. So that's and you know how short that conversation was, right? Well, As it should be. <laughs> right. I, well, I know. I'm hoping it's not that way in year two. Trust me. I mean, yeah. I think. I think I can maybe, uh, you know, hire a few people to come and, and or, okay, get more volunteers to help. So I'm not the one running sandwiches, those sorts of yeah. things. But in general, I mean, I, I Todd, I saw you with uh, hanging out with the All Reds uh, doing funny I couldn't pictures. get enough of those guys. I would have moved in. <laughs> I hope they're adopting. <laughs> Did they I offer? A couple pages. I uh, bought a page from Simon that I got a couple of weeks later. So uh, I got a Madman yo-yo. It was a great time. I really regret not picking up one of their lunch boxes. I have to tell you that. I didn't yeah, those even know were they awesome too. I just didn't want to have to worry about it on the plane getting it smashed. So, yeah. Well, and you know, one person was absent there that is also absent tonight, and that is Sean Rutan, who seems to be Mister Invisible as of late. So hopefully he's back uh, for our next show, and definitely for the next show, OEX, because he. he people believe it or not people were actually asking for him so i'm still haven't quite figured that out yet but if they're asking <laughs> for him i think he should probably show up oh, he's uh, nice. he's i think he would have had a great time i'm gonna see some people commenting you know um, about meeting us i think that was the most fun and most interesting thing for everyone here was to finally meet a lot of these customers that we've dealt with for many many years and mm -hmm. maybe have not even emailed with not not phone no email no anything just we know them as as bidders, and mm -hmm. so we were able to connect and and we're able to connect on a collector level because we're all collectors. We don't just do this for a living. We live and breathe, as you can see, uh, live and breathe this stuff. Uh, Todd and I yet yeah, bought some stuff, had some commissions. Um, Mike or, or I'm calling you Mike. Todd uh, might have spent a lot of time with with Mike and Laura, but that's what I got. Ah, oh, sweet. So I had this commission done uh, prior. So this is my holy trinity is Miles Davis is the father, Prince is the son, and Jimi Hendrix is the Holy Spirit. And I knew, uh, I, I was hoping that Mike would enjoy doing something like that, being a fan of, of music, and, and he was. You know, we had a conversation about what he did there. and um, But just in, in general, we could go from table to table to table, even mm -hmm. go to our competition other auction houses go to their booths and we all spoke the same language. So that was, it was great that you were able to put this on and it was an extension what what CAF already is, right? A, a community of like-minded people mm -hmm. and, but very static, very not personal. And here we were able to come together and it really was a fantastic time as far as I'm concerned. You know, we've been involved with many, many shows and many different categories and big, small in between i don't know that any ever was as well run as yours and this is off your first attempt it really yeah. could not have been from our standpoint could not have been better from the venue to walking right down into 
the the floor to how you treated everybody, the reception, everything was absolutely stellar. Yeah. Thank you. And, and just one quick other sidebar that, that, that shows the community. So Friday night at the reception, we do a little mingling and then we all decide, let's sit at the table, just the three of us, and we start talking and a couple guys come up and say, can we sit here? And we didn't know him from Adam. We said, sure, introduced uh, ourselves. And then another couple came up. The, the two guys, Raphael and who was – was it wasn't John. Todd was, and Kelly. Yeah, what, <laughs> no, I'm saying the other guy that was with Raphael. You remember his name? I do not know. Sorry. If you're out so, there, we apologize. Yeah. Sorry. But they came up first. But, yeah, then it was funny. Then a married couple, Todd and Kelly, came up to meet our Todd and Kelly. Right. And, another married couple. It's fine. An, another married couple. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but it was just, a, and then an hour and a half or whatever, a great conversation that started with art and went into Migo, and it just, uh, it really kind of hit home again the like-mindedness uh, mm. and the good spirit of everything. Uh, mm. It really was perfect. How's that sound? Yeah, I like to hear that. I do. Um, as as Alex would say, perfection can only get better. So is that what you say, Alex? Uh, <laughs> It does sound like something I would say. <laughs> <laughs> what, did, what, did, what did you tell me? You knew everything at 18 and now you know I said more. I knew everything at 18 and now I know even more. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, true. That's statement. You told yeah. me that for, yeah. for a long time. Yep. And you got a long way to go, Kelly. I do, yes. <laughs> Speaking of art, Marcus has a question. Uh, is that your collection behind you? Alex. What's the question? Is that your oh, collection? Uh, yeah, except for the two pieces here that we'll be talking about. Uh, yeah, everything else in this office is 100 percent uh things that don't fit at home still over right, right. and it, yeah. there's actually an office next to your office next to, yeah there's a whole wall of art over here that you never see there's art of uh some uh posters and art over here but yeah then the office next to mine which is sort of a a temp office depending on who needs it that's where more art is i have a whole swamp thing wall uh mm -hmm. yeah yeah and most of it's on calf or some of it's on calf right <laughs> no i gotta get that caught up Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's there. We need you to film a calf cribs video where you, you actually uh, we we have you people can, do, do that. You film yeah. film the space and you just kind of talk about what's on the wall. Well, as you're, as you're seriously, around. we could do that for the office. That. I mean, people are really blown away when they when they come in here and all the walls are decorated. Again, mm -hmm. a lot of it's my stuff, but there's other people's. There's things from from the owner Steve Jeppy from his collection or from uh, mm -hmm. displays at the museum that used to be open in Baltimore. Everyone's office, Todd's office is overflowing. In fact, I think before I leave tonight, I'm going to go get a few pieces out of there and put them in my office because it, it, it's too much in his room. I'm pretty sure you uh, can't take my chair, though. <laughs> you can have the chair. You know what? You know the pieces I'm going to want. Uh, no, but and it go it it hits home. What we keep saying is it, how passionate we are about all of these things, these uh, collectibles. We're we're collectors of all types of items, and it shows in in everyone's office. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, as you saw, Marvel number one Marvel fan even said that uh, you need to shoot a crib video. So, yeah, uh, yeah just w maybe when the auction's over, you got another week until well, eight days, right? Next the, the Wednes next Wednesday. Yeah, next, uh, this, yeah, when yeah. everything yeah. ends. So, mm -hmm. I'll 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 say after that, you know, get take a few days off and then film a crib yeah. video for us. So, you know, hit us something before the uh, I guess before the end of the month or somewhere. That'd be fun. I want to see it. We can yeah. do it. Kelly, get on that. We'll get on that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have enough to do yet, Kelly. Now you get to be a cameraman, too. Sure. <laughs> that actually is so true. You have no idea, Phil. <laughs> oh, man. All right. well, we'll, uh, let's get into it. So, uh, so we, like I mentioned when we started the show, we got a lot of uh, a lot of art to look at in this auction, and it's uh, it, a lot start ending. Yeah. Is it yeah, it's like nine days from now, right? So it would be yeah, uh, each Wednesday. So I broke this down for, for all the viewers who are following along at home. I have DC art up front. Then we do some Vampirella and Monster art. We go into Marvel. We go into miscellaneous comic publishers and comic book artists. We go into syndicate art and cartoonists. And then we end with a couple kind of wild card miscellaneous, miscellaneous items at the end. So with with a special piece that we start the whole thing off with mm -hmm. hmm. all right well then uh let's see what the special piece is that we get to start the, the uh, show off with here let me get this in here and resize this a tad 
So, and uh, it's uh, it's a piece behind you, isn't it? Yep. Let me highlight that. There we go. So, so this uh, was, and you had this at OEX too. We had this OEX, and the question that everybody asks, and this is not a joke, this is the truth: What Wolverine art is that? Yeah. And while it looks like Wolverine art, we told everybody it, that is not Wolverine. That is actually the original first art done for A Nightmare on Elm Street before the first movie ever came out. So this is by Duncan Eagleson. He's an artist that st started as a graffiti artist. He's worked for ad agencies. He's worked for a New Line Cinemas. He's done comic book work. Uh, uh, he's just his scope is is pretty dynamic, uh, not only subject matter, but also the mediums that he's worked in. Uh, so at this point, he was doing some work for New Line Cinemas on poster art, and they came to him with this idea of a nightmare on Elm Street and get, basically handed him a script. There were, It was so early, there were no photos, there was no model sheets, there was nothing to show what Freddy Krueger should look like. So he read the script, and so he decided to do this artwork of three blades slashing through the sky on this peaceful Elm Street scene. Well, as we now know, Freddy Krueger has four blades on his glove. Mm -hmm. So this was used, and if you want to bring back up at, at some point, the first black and white uh, image we have there. So that was the first place this appeared. This was in trade publications before the movie was done while they were still trying to get funds to complete the project. Flash forward a little bit, and they're ready to release it in the U.S., and rather than use this art, they now have a concept of what Freddy Krueger's glove is going to look like. They have fleshed out some of the graphics a little bit more, and that becomes what is known as the US-1 sheet that, that everybody knows the image of. Mm -hmm. However, within a few years, this was re released in many different countries around the world, and those are some of the Im images that you showed. They then use this art rather than that art, and this is kind of riff on what became the, the U.S. poster art but right. with his, his blades. So they used the concept that he did either sort of like this uh, or just the blades. In fact, what we have here is this is the 20th anniversary uh, DVD. They actually reused it for that and added Freddy Krueger bottom center there, which did not appear in the original art. So while this is not an image that even kind of serious, hardcore horror fans even know of unless you really do a deep dive and know the farm releases. It is something that was used over and over and over again. So incredibly early and historic uh, movie poster art is, you know, not out there that much, certainly not like comic book and other types of, of art, even though how many millions of movie posters have been made all over the years. Um, so this was a really tough one to try and kind of pinpoint, put an estimate on. We've seen some films of lesser prominence and their movie post art does great. We've seen some blockbusters and those original art pieces haven't done what we thought they should. So mm -hmm. this is one that we put out there to 5,000 opening, 20 to 35 estimate. We loved it so much we made it the front cover of our catalog, including spot UV on the blades. So uh, we opened it at five, it's already at 10. We'll see where it ends up next week. but. To me, in my 37 years at, 38 years at Hakes, one of the most interesting pieces that I feel we've ever offered. Yeah. Well, it's cool to see. I, I dropped by the booth to check it out. And uh, no, I mean, it, you, you just never know with stuff like this. Like you said, there isn't, uh, you haven't sold a lot of uh, movie poster art prior to this, I would assume, right? No. Mm -mm. Yep. No, there isn't a lot out there. I mean, a lot of posters would have been, um, they wouldn't have been done this way. That Their photos or the original art's just gone. Mm -hmm. um, we sort of learned that when we had just a little bit of VHS art in a, in a collection. Like most VHS box covers are images, photos from the movie. So very rarely do they actually have original art as, the, as this. And the same would happen with movie posters. And it's it is large, as you can see, you know, it is one, it is one of them. Me. This is this is sort of one sheet poster size, so yeah. eventually 27 by 41 ish. It's a big piece of art, yeah. It's incredible, it's it's a it's a fantastic piece. So, if you you know do want to do a deeper dive, go and look at this uh listing on hakes.com. A great write up by Mike Bollinger. We have a video that was put together by our crew, um, 
with a voiceover by Scott Muscle. And we also have a link to a Scoop article. And if you're not familiar, Scoop is a sister company of ours, part of the Jebby's the Jebby Family Enterprises, that uh, is a weekly e-newsletter that promotes conventions and comics and movies and auctions and so on and so forth. And Amanda, who's on staff at Gemstone, did a great interview recently with Duncan Eagleson, the artist, and he went into sort of his career and a lot more information behind this uh, art than we even put in our description. So it's even if you're just a casual fan, it's worth a read just because of how interesting I think everything is. Very cool. Um, I, I saw the uh, embedded video on the site, but I didn't uh, have the time to look at it, but I'll definitely check it out myself. Sounds you know, any any interview with an artist who's got a interesting career like like him, um, I want to hear it. What was his first comic book artist that he, that he so, worked? With? I don't know about his first, but his, his real claim to fame is he had a short run at DC. He did one issue of Neil Gaiman's Sandman. He did one issue of Peter Milligan's Shade to Changing Man, and then a few other things, a, a Big Book of Death, and they did some other comic work. He did Anne Rice Witching Hour. Um, so it, it, I don't know that he's had a lot of work at any one type of thing. He's just he also has done concert uh, T-shirts, and we are expecting to get some of that artwork for next auction. So he's just a fascinating guy in that he's done so many different things. Mm. Now, was this uh, brought to you by him or? Yeah, yeah. yeah. we sold his Sandman pages over a couple of lock auctions over mm -hmm. the last few years. And he's constantly kind of going through his archives and came across this. And you'll see another piece coming up and said, would anyone have an interest? And I said, uh, that would be a yes. Yeah, well, most definitely. Uh, all right. Well, I mean, this is going to be an interesting one to follow. That's for sure. We don't have a lot of, uh, you know, even for me, tracking market data and things. There's just not a lot of material out there to compare this to. So right. I'm curious to see where it goes. Now we have uh, the Blade Master uh, artwork. Let's highlight that. So, not as well known as Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, uh, but this was a movie that was produced. Uh, this is we have the original art again. It's twenty-seven by forty-one. We have the preliminary art, and we actually have the production poster as well. So, not a lot to say on this one versus the Nightmare on Elm Street, but I just want to show that we have multiple pieces from him. We have another piece that's for a film that is based on Dungeons and Dragons that was never made. And then we have a few other comic pages this time, including two pages <laughs> from Shade to Changing Man. So <laughs> you saw that, Bill. Uh huh. Thanks, Marcus. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. anyway, if you're into Duncan's art or just want to learn more about his art, we have a number of pieces from him this auction. Very nice. Uh, this. <laughs> My my wife's favorite genre of film is uh, you know the uh, these kind of bad early eighties um, you know fantasy. Yeah, Todd, films. Todd found the trailer for this and it it looks it doesn't look just bad. I mean it looks ridiculous. <laughs> well, this was a you know the popularity of Beastmaster. Everybody wanted to get on that train with you know, a low budget fantasy science fiction thing. Uh, they got Miles O'Keefe, who's famous for Bo Derek's Tarzan and a couple other things. So uh, there you go. It's kind of that USA up all night or, uh, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it looks like it's airbrushed to me. You can see the you know, the figures are masked and everything. So, yeah, yep, definitely can tell how it was put together. But I did not pose for this, everybody, just so you know. I wasn't, you know, this is not my physique in whatever this year this was, like 83. I, I think I still weighed about 120 pounds. And uh, <laughs> if I turned sideways, you couldn't see me. So this is not me. But uh, very cool. It's interesting that the trailer would still be out there. That you can, but everything's on YouTube these days, right? Yeah. Oh, you gotta yeah. love the internet, you know. All right, so then we have, uh, what do we got? We've got the cover to Batman 315, and uh, very, very nice piece here. The big Ben out there. Or something. Uh, but either way, uh, this is a cool piece. Is it, It's uh, Giordano, I think? Yeah. yeah. And it's a great take on the whole bat signal thing. You have, you know, the silhouetted bat in front of the, you know, moon. Yeah, so this is the first of 
several covers for DC books that we have coming up. Um, and this, among others, what people may recognize were at OAX, we had had those on display, had a actually a pretty good reaction to, to all the art that we had. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, hey, I appreciate you guys giving uh, stickers out to everybody, too. Mm -hmm. I think you were one of the few people that contributed to the swag bag in that way. Right. Oh, glad to do it. We all left with a nice Thor hammer, which was nice. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I really think that was cool, and it's in my office, yeah. Well, if I'm ever in your office, I'll definitely sign it for you, Alex. Cool. <laughs> that, that might increase the value of it by yeah. a little bit. <laughs> well, we thought, we, you know, our, our, with that, we just wanted to give everybody some kind of uh, collectible from the show, right? Something mm -hmm. that they could uh, always refer back to and remember what OEX was like. But uh, it was cool. So, um so let's see, where were we at with this? This was, uh, it's a $2,600, five to 10 uh, on the estimate. So that's, uh, that's that's sounds about right to me. So we'll be curious to see where this one ends up too. Ending, uh, beginning at uh, 9 a.m. On, on Wednesday, March 20th. P.M. P.M., exactly. I'm sorry, 9 p.m. Yeah, better say, yeah. <clears throat> better say p.m. It does. Okay. I just wasn't reading it all through. But uh, then we've got, uh, let's see, this is a... Uh, Oh, an, an unpublished cover by Apero from Detective mm -hmm. Comics 481. Hold this one up here. That's makes you wonder why they didn't publish that. Right? Well, <laughs> Todd can give the backstory. We we have the information why. This was a transition period between uh, when Batman Family was sort of going away as its own publication. So mm -hmm. they had this ready for Detective. And then decided to do one of those multi-story issues instead. So it got a, I believe, a Starling cover with, you know, multiple elements and uh, Batman family kind of at the top of that. I guess those stories were probably already uh, fleshed out. So mm -hmm. then this one just didn't happen then. You, know, you would have thought they would have just saved this for later. but uh, yeah, So that's, that's, that's the, the cover it became, which is nowhere near as dynamic as the piece that we have. Yeah. yeah, that's kind of disappointing to see that when you could have had this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> I thought it's interesting that the uh, there's the clock tower again that was also in the last piece. You know, I also mm -hmm. had the clock tower. So, yeah, that's a much, much better piece. So, um, well, unpublished or not, I mean, I'm so yeah, I was gonna say, I mean, you're probably in the same price range estimate wise, five mm -hmm. to 10. That makes sense. Be more if it was <clears throat> if it was published. Oh heck yeah, yeah, still a great cover. Yeah, very nice. And technically, it's in our catalog, so it is published. How's that sound? <laughs> <laughs> that work? You, you can always fall back on that, Alex. <laughs> uh, well, we did. We said the same thing, right? Even at OX with the uh, with the cover that or the the poster that Simone did. We're like, it is published. It's, yeah. We made it into a print. So you, yeah, you can't argue with us on that one. So, uh, uh, Gary, uh, Gary Frank, right? We've uh, uh, nice, nice piece here. I mean, uh, what do you add on this one? You're it's a two thousand dollars and another five to ten estimate on it. Yeah, yeah. Another good, you know, just Gary Frank image. You got Superman, Lois, Jimmy, and then uh, Metallo and Chains in behind. So it's kind of the after the battle sort of uh, image. And his Superman face is just always, you know, well done. All right. Well, we've yeah. only had what, recently we've had one other Frank cover or two covers, maybe one cover, but it did well, yeah. got a lot of attention, went above estimate. So, yeah, his his artwork is just fantastic. We have an earlier Gary Frank uh, saber tooth page in this auction as well. So it's an opportunity for someone to get some of his earlier uh work yeah very nice this is i've always liked gary frank's art i wish he would uh, you know do marvel <laughs> more marvel i didn't see the saber tooth page i'll have to dig dig for that one uh, i think i have that coming up when we do the marvel coming up? Is the time i think so yeah right. well then i get to see it tonight okay now this one was a i remember this this was a cowan piece because i used it as part of the show graphics so uh, question quarterly uh, uh, cover. Obviously, everybody 
who loves Dennis Cowan's work, loves his work on the question. And, uh, you know, number one, that's what everybody wants. Even when he's, uh, he gets a commission, it's always, you know, it's like 80% of the time it's a question. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is a pretty nice piece. And, uh, but what was uh, question quarterly? Was that a, uh, was that something that was, um, you know, brought in reprints or was it? Uh, uh, no, I think it was new stories and it just came after the, the last series and so okay. the monthly they just they did that out. with the justice league titles back then like you know they had all those quarterly issues that were sort of i don't know semi-annuals or something sure um, you get a nice golden age you know feel to this you have the film the film real sprockets and you know the the fist coming at you um i think it's a great image it actually has a feel of watchmen a little bit you know you can mm -hmm. kind of see this being rorschach even you know um just the fist coming at you it's just kind of a an interesting idea for the cover uh, I like dennis's stuff he's uh he's a, he's a he's a great interview and and uh you know I, i've always loved his work love his stuff on deathlock question um yeah you know, he's gotten around yeah this had a lot of attention at the show too mm -hmm. people like this one and he sort of did it in like a duotone kind of finish, so it it's color, but it sort of reminds you of you know black and white film. So, mm -hmm. well, uh, this one's a thirteen hundred, uh, two to five estimate on this one. Then, uh, okay, so what is this? This is icon number one, Noel Giddings. Kelly, take it away. Noel uh, came to us with um, some other art in the auction, and then well, also her her art that she gave us uh, a, a good portion of her original color cover art, which uh, as opposed to it being a color guide, she was a final colorist, <clears throat> and every piece that we have from her is the actual piece published. Um, not like I said, unlike other color guides, this is her colored painting over you know over top of the of the stat. So um, final piece and this and I think it's like 14 or so lots in this in this auction, uh, roughly, but they, they came directly from her. And I think they're they are fantastic. If you're, uh, yeah. if you're in any way a fan of icon or any of the other uh, characters, I mean, she worked with with uh, a lot with uh, with Dennis Cowan and, and Cohen, sorry, and um, other the artists in this auction is from the Milestone Universe, which right, was, was primarily hired by DC to do this cover treatment for mm -hmm. it. Town was one of the co-founders of Milestone. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, this is what they would have actually, he would have done actual artwork in black and white. And then mm -hmm. those pieces were reproduced. And then she would have done final colors. Mm -hmm. And right. then they probably would have scanned this and did uh, four color separation to print the cover. So this is actually the, final art that wow. they use to yeah. print the book yeah, so it, it is to it. yeah, it, it, it's just it, not the black and white art but it's also not a color guy we got to differentiate that because yeah, color god is a different this monster entirely this is that, really yeah. published mm -hmm. production art right mm -hmm. yeah. yes yeah i'm having uh just you know i'm having trouble loading the images on the site probably something on my end but uh i will continue to try it's uh it's just not uh like connecting to load the artworks for some reason i'll figure it out but we'll still keep talking about them so um but uh, you know at, as soon as you said uh, from the milestone universe then i knew uh, you mm -hmm. know what it was uh, mm -hmm. it's back to my still my inexperience a bit with that um and uh all right let's uh let's take a look at the next slot and we'll see if i can't uh, click on this one but this is uh, another piece i get a hardware mm -hmm. number one from uh, noel yes. as well same yeah, exact right. deal as as Todd said. As I said, this is the the final final color art of this of this cover. And she, I don't remember the exact year she worked there, but she worked there for a long, she's a long tenure at Milestone. Um, well, very well respected. I, I uh, a great article about her and, and on Scoop as well as you said before for Nightmare. There's a, a great article. Um, mm -hmm. There was just linked in every one of the auction listings for right. her artwork has a link to that article, which is incredibly in depth. Yeah. 
Yeah. No, she did a solid job on this too. She did, yeah, <clears throat> for sure. So got, a, got a bit. I mean, Hardware is obviously uh, a very popular character from uh, from Dennis as well. So uh, five hundred dollar uh, current bid on this one. Mm -hmm. And how many pieces from her in the auction? Twelve to fourteen, roughly, about a dozen. I, I forget the exact number, but of, that are in this auction. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll uh, anybody interested in uh, the uh, milestone universe should definitely check those out. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I think I doubled up a link. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, that's it. It's on me because I didn't uh, notice it. So uh, what do we got next? Now we have a Paul Ryan, uh, the amazing Paul Ryan, a Superman Man of Tomorrow 11 cover. Uh, it's already got four bids on it. It's over $1,300. You, you got a two to $5,000 estimate on it. Um, I love Paul Ryan stuff. I've never owned a single thing by Paul Ryan, um, which is kind of crazy for as prolific as, uh, as he was. But um, this is a great piece. Yeah, I do like that. Hmm. Yeah, that's really uh, cool. yeah, inks and, by uh, Brett Breeding, uh, and as uh, pointed out by our good friend Mr. Bob Layton, I believe people are familiar with him. I, I correct me if I'm wrong, Todd. Did he not say that both were understudies of his, both the students of his? I believe he did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he was he was not shy about that at all. No, he actually spent a. a Good bit of time at our booth and it was quite enjoyable and he knows how to bring in a crowd yes he does that is uh very true <laughs> and at least for one day we knew where bob layton was <laughs> <laughs> yeah he is very, he's very charismatic and um yeah. you're right he he definitely um yeah he's got a gift that i don't have like like that and, and you know in person he's the man he he mm -hmm. can uh he can really reel people in, but um, but that's cool. I mean, obviously, in his career, he's worked with a, a lot of people, and I'm sure there were many people who are either, uh, you know, started their careers with with Bob in the room in some fashion. So uh, yeah, that doesn't surprise me at all. But you know, again, Paul Ryan um, is a uh, you know he's he's a solid artist, and um, yeah, it's a very nice piece. Well, it's got and some the element, you know. Dinosaurs. I was going to say, if you're looking for something different than the Superman cover, this has mm -hmm. kind of an interesting mix of images that you, you know, don't really see on on a Superman cover. Nope, he's not usually fighting dinosaurs. That's for sure. Uh, let's see. Wow. Okay, that's uh, that is nice. And again, we've got uh, four bids on it already. It's almost met the low end of the reserve. Then we have a a Lee Bermejo. Man of Steel cover from issue uh, 112. Click on that one. Yeah, that's that's, uh, that's Lee Bermejo. That's for sure. We don't get, uh, you know, Lee doesn't work traditionally any longer. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think uh, all of us who collect original art lament that, but uh, but there is still a lot of his artwork out there. So so this is uh, this is nice to see. And I know we have a few collectors out there who like to have. Uh, uh, canines in them so there's there's not only a superman interest and a bermejo interest in this piece but there's also interesting in uh, crypto as well we actually t had an in-depth conversation with someone who is a crypto collector and bought another piece from us um that the dog was in that we had years ago so that was kind of an interesting conversation as well because that was a, a first time for any mm -hmm. of us i think mm -hmm. well you know there's uh the, the, there's a collector for, for all things out there, yeah. that's for sure. And, um, you know, some of us in art, you know, like like the X-Men or Thor, like me, and then they, it, other people like Batman, and then other people yeah. like crypto. It's okay. It's it's good, in fact. Yeah. I mean, it, it guarantees pretty much that all art is desirable, one way or another. There's, there's one of my art. biggest collections is Underdog, it, in general, merchandise, and but I have some artwork, and, and I am 100% a cat person, and I still collect Underdog, so... There's that. There you go. But uh, yeah, this is a good example of his work from. I mean, what year was this? Do you know? Um, it's um, probably in the description here. Uh, 2001. 2001. Yep. That's about. I mean, Bermejo was really getting started. Um, I forget when his first published work was, but 
I think that's when he was starting to get get noticed by art collectors was right around then. It's probably about the same time when he started working with, with Mark Hay. It was around that same, same period. I don't, I don't think they work together anymore because he doesn't do traditional work, but uh, that's about the, the time when I first met him at San Diego. So yeah, very nice. Uh, let's see. And that one's at $1,200 already too. Then we've got uh, a George Perez Teen Titans original. I can't, can I not make it bigger? Let's see. There we go. Now, what was this used for? You tell us. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> <We're, we're, laughs> that's the question. Uh, yeah, we, we have a, a deep circuit. dive. It, it appears like it would have been some sort of licensing or possibly like a design, you know, for a t-shirt or something like that, but we could not nail it down. I found yeah, I the did. color of yeah, this we, image right, right. on the net with a logo mm -hmm. on it as well, but no information that said it was actually used for something. I think it's someone right. that just enjoyed coloring it and had it posted. But uh, yeah. I mean, this is definitely classic, you know, Perez, like you'd be looking for, you know, yeah. this isn't later work. This is, this is right yeah. in the sweet spot. Well, yeah, we say, all. I mean, we, we say circa 1983. So you're talking about in the heyday of new Teen Titans and yeah. to have his take on Teen Titans, the full mm -hmm. team, full figure. It's a pretty dynamic piece. No, definitely. I mean, it looks like, is there some lettering in there? Or it looks, you can see like it says the Teen, teen Titans. I'm not sure. It's like hard to say, but I'm sure there's no stamps on it. So that's what, on the back. So there's no way to tell what it, what it could have potentially no. been used for. It doesn't. It doesn't look like a convention sketch from from George. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't. I don't think it's something like that. I mean, unless he did. Somebody had him do like a program cover or something along those lines. But uh, usually, yeah, he wouldn't. He would never do something quite like this at a show unless he there was a charity auction or something, right? right. So yeah. Uh, so yeah, it had to have been used for something. Well, it's interesting. The version of all the characters actually lines right up with Migos' line of Teen Titans figures they did, the the costumes and things. So it's it's again, it's 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 hard to say what they used it for, but it's definitely those classic characters. Mm -hmm. Well, cool. We uh, we all love George's work around here. What was uh, where were we at? You have one bid at a thousand. I'm sure it, you know. There's a lot of Perez fans out there. There'll be a few more bits on that before it's over. Uh, Brian says it's from Who's Who. Ah, uh, well, Brian. Yeah, let's highlight that. Brian. Brian knows okay. his stuff. He's he's one of the deans in the, uh, uh, or the. Well, I should say he's one of the professors in the chat. All right. Well, you know that's funny because it leads into, Who's Who. So <laughs> seriously, but no, and yeah, I have, I have, working on. <laughs> I have the, the omnibus, so we will, um, we'll dive we'll find into it that. And that will update it tomorrow. So that's fantastic. Yeah. yeah thanks yeah. for that, Brian. I assume it, you didn't get it from the same consigner who brought the who's who, right? No, we okay. actually didn't. Uh, no, we did not. No. We did not. Well, this is, uh, well, this, this, is this, this uh, actually came from the artist. This, this piece did. Okay. This is the next. So, so this Joe was James. not part of the regular Who's Who series. This is when they were doing sort of backup features in comics in the Who's Who style. Um, what was this from? Uh, Detective, Detective Comics Annual yeah. Number Two. Well, this is Todd's favorite interpretation: the ponytail Ridley. It is not. <laughs> That's how <we> <laughs> Todd, you, you know, when Sean's not here, I, apparently you take the brunt of Alex's. Of, I'll, well, no, I'll he, between both equal of opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, no, this is this is a pretty nice piece. It's mm -hmm. matted. Is that uh, is that the, what I'm looking at? Yeah, it's matted. Right. Okay. We might show a photo without the mat. I'm not sure. Let's see. I think. Oh yeah. Okay. We did. Yeah. yeah no. There. Yep. There. Shows a little bit more. Like very little more, but yeah. And then as published, there we go. Oh, well, that's nice. Um, what do you got? You got uh, three bids, 333, half the way to the low end of the reserve. So, and definitely in the who's who. So what was the next one? Oh, that's right. Uh, 
Let's see, we got mm -hmm. Scarecrow on this one. I'll just go straight to the non matted piece. So, same artist, but th this one speaks to me more than the Riddler. I think this one is great. It says a little more of you in it, Alex. With the... Thank you. I, yes. I take that as a compliment. <laughs> well, it, all, it almost has a splash page feel from the book. It's got a little more story mm -hmm. to it. The other one's just sort of like a pinup type uh, page. Yeah. So this, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, if uh, Batman, victim of the uh, Scarecrow's gas, you have the Scarecrow, you have that, you know, skull snake spider combo. So it's just, it's got a nice feel to it and a little more flow than the other one. I think what Kelly was referring to is that I haunt him. That is very true. <laughs> I really can't wait to go to sleep. <laughs> and uh, the color, they did yep. a nice job. They did. That, yeah. uh, kind of scarecrow jumping out in brown and everything else, sort of having that blue tone. Yeah, no, that's a very nice piece. What's the dimensions on this? Uh, 10 and 3 quarter by 11 and a half. It's great size for the wall. You can fit two of them on your wall. That's right. Yeah. Using the using the mats or not using the mats that yeah. already are there with it, and this one's got the three bids as well, roughly the same price as the last one. Mm -hmm. No, these are good. Uh, let's see. So that was item nine nine two, and as everybody knows, the way the bidding goes at Hakes, right? It, it's extended. You get a yeah. you can't be sniped at Hakes. Mm -hmm. No. What's what? What's the uh, time added on when it's within? Uh, Twenty minutes. So on both closing days, Tuesday and Wednesday, all the art is on Wednesday. But both closing days, nine o'clock p.m. Eastern, we start a twenty-minute clock. So at mm -hmm. nine twenty, anything that did not receive a bid in those twenty minutes closes. Anything that does receive a bid in that time period reopens individually per item for twenty minutes. So it kind of goes in waves until the final item ends with um, twenty minutes ending with no bid which is what we've done forever. And you will now see other auction houses starting to adopt that as well. Uh, for us, we've always felt, number one, the consigners like it. Um, mm -hmm. But also for, as you said, the bidders, it's a fair way for everyone to have a chance, not be sniped. And also what it allows is maybe you get knocked out on one piece and then it allows you to jump on something else rather than if it ends in succession and you can't go back. So. Uh, nothing is ever going to make every consigner and every bidder happy. We sort of think that this is our best way of trying to do that for everyone. Mm -hmm. Well, it should definitely get the consigners a few extra dollars. And in, in most cases, if they've got a piece out there that, uh, you know, has a genuine interest from multiple buyers. And so that is a good thing because you're not going to want to be the guy to wait till the last second to put one in a bid on there. You're just, you're, you're going to be more apt, I would think to, uh, to put a bid in. Five minutes out or something, yeah. just just to stake yeah. your claim on it. Uh, all right. So then we have coming up next. We have a another Joe James piece, uh, something from Green Lantern uh, Core Quarterly. This continues with the dog theme. <laughs> yes, it does. Yes, it does. Anthropomorphic dog. Uh, well, speaking of a quarterly book, here's Green Lantern Quarterly. Mm -hmm. And this is from that time period where Gnort ruled the world uh, in the JLA, you know, uh, Green Lantern world. Uh, Gnort was kind of a central figure for a few years there. So um, each of these lots, we have several lots and uh, there are multiple pages uh, starring Gnort. I miss this era of DC. So it. it that the, it doesn't help me. I get, I'd have to do a lot of research probably to go back to understand. Uh, I was uh, doing the, uh, you know, Kevin Maguire, Keith Giffen, you know, Justice Leagues back mm -hmm. then, and uh, mm -hmm. even Bart Sears on Europe, you know, uh, Gnort would get himself in there. So uh, just part of that kind of uh, lighthearted uh, fare back then. Well, I, uh, I'm sure there is a fan base for Gnort. Of course, it has to be. <laughs> Without <Right>? question. <laughs> uh, so where are we at with that one? We got well, clearly, it's uh, it's a bit up to uh, even more than the two who's who pieces. So, yeah, you may be underestimating that. Uh, uh, There's uh, four four lots in the auction. Five lots, Todd. I, I think. think I think. Yes, yeah, 
Yeah, I think around four. You got four, four different locks. Each one is multiple pages. Mm -hmm. I don't think any of them are complete, but it's right. you get get a nice sample. See an extra one there. And there. Well, not bad. So what do we, yeah, this is uh, 355, five bits. Mm -hmm. We've got... Okay, we, this one was the set, uh, some Kurt, Kurt Swans. You've had a lot of Kurt Swan art, uh, you know, over uh, the times that we've done the, uh, you know, the our auction previews. So you've got another four pieces here. Yeah, all from the same issue, uh, Superman 298. But all with really nice content and action and, uh, yeah. So you can classic swan and um honestly how many times did they have to rebuild these superman statues because they get destroyed every time they show them <laughs> <laughs> uh, they had it in the the, the city budget to uh, keep keep rebuilding it no matter what yep. so again what was it oh it's superman 298 all right Interesting. So for anyone out there who keeps saying they need to get a uh, Kurt Swan page, we have four choices for that person. If you know who I'm talking to, Bill. <laughs> 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 yes, that is me. That is definitely me. And this one's the one that has the most, well, I don't know if it's the most bids, but it's at the highest current bid, right? 331 so far. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, well, nobody draws uh, Superman quite like Kurt Swan did. That's for sure. That's for sure. There you go. Get a nice panel of them here. Right there. And, hmm. you know, these pages are all pretty much, you know, some kind of action battle sequences going on. So, you know, it's a lot of great dynamic anatomy. You know, you have some great angles and some uh, just good fighting scenes in here. Yeah, very good. Very, very nice. So we got four of those. Now we've got uh, a Shadow Strikes cover from uh, Rod Wiggum. Right, what we got here? Title page. Oh, title page. I'm sorry. Yes. Cover quality. I mean, this is a great. It looked like a cover, right? Yeah. 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 Not bad. Uh, some, oh, 91. All right. Stranka would be proud. Yeah. Yep. So we got uh, bidding on that one. Then, uh, oh, Ron Friends Green Lantern. So we got an interior splash page, it looks like, from yeah, that. Another yeah. one looks like it. When this showed up, I thought it was a cover. I mean, it really has that look to it. it this is. It's got the room for that logo and everything. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, right at the top. Yep. Hmm. Wow. No, that's not bad at all. Get some Guy Gardner action in there, and the Batman's kind of a classic look. He's got, like, the big uh, baggy pouches on his belt, kind of a combat belt situation. Mm-hmm. And where are we at with that? 242 for the splash. There we go. No, not bad. That's, that's nice. I, you know... Ron Friends is one of my favorite artists, so uh, I've uh, and and I have owned stuff by Ron, <laughs> so I can't say that I, I've omitted him from my collection. But uh, yeah, I always like his stuff, and he still does great convention sketches these days too. And and like uh, like Bob Layton, he knows how to curate a crowd at a show. Mm -hmm. So this piece uh, does not have an artist name on it, but it is a, uh, let's see, got a Batman and Robin versus the Joker piece. Yeah, so for a 66 frame share puzzle, and, you know, most like the Whitman studio artists, it's not mm -hmm. like they used name artists for, for right. any products. Uh, but what's nice about this is many, uh, much artwork for puzzles can be just an overlay. So all you get are the black lines, Printed on an acetate sheet, and then your color blotches, and that forms the puzzle. I have a couple underdogs like that. This is fully realized art uh, painted that was then turned into the frame tray puzzle, and it's also 66. So 
anything from the heyday of the TV show, as far as merchandise art goes, is highly coveted and does not turn up that often. So we have this and then another piece coming up that are really nice, uh, full color, fully realized pieces for merchandise. Yeah. When obviously the artist somewhere ran along uh, with uh, Dick Sprang for the Joker yeah. face. I mean, right. the, the Batman and Robin are very sort of, you know, soft feature, you know, a little more realistic. And then you have that great Joker face there. So. Hmm. No, very nice. Love the colors on this thing, too. And the image of Batman it looks like he's coming off of a bat trampoline or something. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, definitely. But I can see Mike Allred doing a rendition of Batman. Oh, sure. And, you know, oh, like yeah. That, you know, that's totally in his uh, wheelhouse, you know, in his style, that he, way he'd approach the character from that era. Um, yeah, so this one's all, over $800 already. And, you know, certainly so. I'm sure that's, I, I'm sure one of those bidders had that puzzle back mm -hmm. in the day. If Mike ever does something like that, Todd will be the first to know because he's still kind of peeping around their windows and hanging trying to hang out with them <laughs> <laughs> no seriously they couldn't have been more gracious because we both were over multiple times and talked to me you know one thing about that is that we hit it off with them sort of on a pop culture level so we talked about james bond and the, and the mm -hmm. prisoner and you know again coming at it strictly from we were all just fans of this stuff so that was really entertaining well mike's work so diverse i mean you know he did you know a series with man from uncle he did the batman 66 he's done archie stuff i mean it's just, it's just all over the board and he just it's a home run yeah. he really does a great job that's uh that is so true yeah he's uh i wish i had as much time to hang out with him as you guys did but uh, i've got well i've had those interviews with him so I, i've got that for me but um but yeah that, that was that was really really fun uh, a treat to be hanging out with them but here you know here we've got another uh another piece another whitman piece here again fun a little more on. classic you know image uh mm -hmm. batman swinging in uh i don't know what robin's doing getting in the driver's seat we know he doesn't <laughs> belong there but you get the batmobile <laughs> so uh you know just hanging out in the wharf with the green toxic water behind him <laughs> yeah look at that well, <laughs> they had to make the colors work on this thing. It's, yeah, you know, yeah. I think I think Robin's. You know, it, it's run out of gas. He's just pushing it. He's not. <laughs> he's it. not going to be driving. <laughs> that man's swinging him with some gas. <laughs> That's right. In the pouches. Uh, yeah. No, not 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 bad. And this one looked like it was. Uh, over, what is it? Over seven hundred dollars uh, right now in the uh, bidding on it. Cool. No, it's a good piece. Very good piece. And then uh, where are we going to now? Ah, some we've, we've seen a few. I, I don't know if I've, I've seen these before. I've uh, uh, these Jim Lee pieces where it's got that uh, limited edition character, and then he he was doing the drawings in them. So you got you got two of them, or is what's uh, what's the second? It's, uh, it's one. It's one panel on the side. It's a San Diego Comic Con exclusive. Okay. I forget how many they did. Um, it's on there if you zoom in. Fifty. 50, thank you, thank you. 50, okay. Oh, uh, right here, yep. So yeah, the Harley Quinn is the art. Yep. Yeah, and then there's the action figure on the right side. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this uh, it's also graded a 90, if you're, if you're interested in the, in the grade. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a rare piece. Not not many come up, and they they did uh, Joker, Harley Quinn, and Batman, I believe, with three characters that that, that, that he drew. This. And this is from the Tad Moore collection, uh, mm -hmm. awesome collection of action figures and prototype. And there's some artwork in it and a lot of uh, DC and Star Wars, mm -hmm. um, a, a collection that, that Kelly secured. And we started selling the last auction and we'll be selling throughout this year, I believe. Yes. Yeah. There's uh, prototypes coming up, uh, some toy biz action figure prototypes coming up the next auction from him. You'll see that. Uh, but for now. Some Bruckner statue prototypes. Yes, yep. correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in this auction, he has a, a good section of Star Wars and this this piece. That's cool. You usually see Batman or the Joker a lot. Right. I can't say yes. that I've actually seen a Harley Quinn from you know from the the fifty that he did here, but I've seen a, an awful lot of both of the others. You know, don't get it confused with the non you know with, which is the, the the print version. This is original mm -hmm. art. Yeah. Yep. Let's see. 
Oh, well, wait a minute. Let me see something. What was the bid on that one? So that was already 500. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now this piece is behind you as well, Alex. <laughs> Not very good, Vanna White. Let's see. <laughs> but, uh, it's huge. What, what's the size? I mean, you had that one with you too at OAX. Yeah. What's, yeah, the, yeah. what's the size yeah. on that one? Uh, it's 34 by 39. Wow. That's the, well, that's the frame. 21, the 21 by 26 for the art. And then in the frame, which you you can't tell behind me, and I know you're buying the artwork, but they framed it incredibly. Yes. Red velvet. The frame has hearts and skulls, so uh, it just is. It's a super striking piece. This was one that absolutely was drawing in. I'd say drew in more people than anything we had at the booth. I can't and, see why. And rightly so. It's all about the haunches. <laughs> yeah, I knew there was a reason why you drove down, <laughs> Kelly, because you had to drive down uh, art that was framed. And, yes. uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Looking forward to the drive next year. It was actually it was uh, it was nice to get away from East Coast winter and drive down to Florida. But it yeah. it was necessary, and it was very much a game time decision. It, initially, we weren't going to bring any art just because we were all going to fly. Mm -hmm. Things kind of played out. There were reasons for Kelly to make a trip, and then. The, night, the nightmare art showed up. How do we not have that at the booth? We couldn't take that on the plane if we wanted to take a portfolio of art. I think so, uh, this this art showed up two days before I left. Yeah, or, I think so. I think, yeah. yeah, yeah. So once once we had that, then it was we just we knew we had to do it. So we had the case with a nice display of art. But these two big pieces in the booth as well, uh, we got a lot of compliments on the booth, and and that was good to have some stuff in person. Yeah, it always so, helps. It always helps. It helps with the consigner and helps with with the people at the show to see what we have. And mm -hmm. usually, you fall in love with something a little more when you see it in person. I think. And you didn't have to hire a security contingent to uh, mm -hmm. to monitor the booth. You that's why Todd, that's why Todd's there. Yeah. <laughs> Very threatening and imposing figure, Todd. Mm. Yes. <laughs> oh man, but so don't, don't touches don't don't just don't touch the art. And so this one's almost at three and uh, your range on this one's five to ten. Mm. And I, that, that definitely seems seems appropriate for this. I mean, it's great. I mean, at the end of the day, is, we have a uh, it's, uh, does it say when it was painted? Is it got a date on it? No, this one we don't know. Mm -hmm. We assume not published or not in an art book or portfolio or anything. We think it's just a, a commission that was done. Mm hmm. Well, it's, it's nice, and I can, you know, I, I you see kind of similar poses every once in a while from San Julian, but you know, this isn't one that that I've seen before, mm -hmm. you know, and, so, and pieces that he done he's done. So that's that's very nice. So that leads into the next piece. Speaking of things you haven't seen done before, uh, this one is very interesting, uh, much smaller in size, but the central figure and the throne were done as a commission. And then the consigner of this piece bought that piece and sent it back to him to do the background. So it's sort of a double commission piece done in two stages. It was published in a recent art book of his, just the figure and throne, as you see there. And so then what we have is the piece that was, was fully realized after that. And to me, it looked like a worn cover. Oh, yeah. I mean, without question, I'm sure that's what the consigner was thinking, right? I mean, let's let's fill in the fill in the background. Um, yeah, well, that you know, it does it does happen. I've seen, uh, you know, I know of other collectors that have done similar things. You know, they've gotten a commission and uh, it, it was just a figure, no background, and they they'll go out, send it back to the artist, and get them to do more work, or maybe have somebody else do a background for it. I I sold a piece of art on the channel. Uh, Howard Chaikin pinup and uh, the person that bought it loved it and had somebody else draw a background on it and mm -hmm. it looks great now you know so that, that, that it's almost better that uh, you know the consigner was wise enough to send it back to him you know he's now he's got a much nicer finished piece and uh, this one's bid up to uh, this almost the same amount as the other piece $2,860 so yeah it's, uh, well, it's, it's, very nice. it's funny you say that because I got here and had some extra time so a couple pieces that Todd has that were black and white on his wall, I decided to color. They're really pop now. Uh, and 
I, I think it worked out well. We'll see what he thinks tomorrow when he gets into the office. Mm -hmm. Will not like. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait until you see it. I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah, don't, yeah, don't give it, give it a chance, Todd. I use my <laughs> best crayons. <laughs> Oh man, uh, Dorian Clevenger here with a Vampirella, and uh, it's this uh, it's on 15 by 20, got a 200 dollar bid on it. Um, let's see, go ahead and look at the details on this one. Assume this was probably a commission piece as well. Yeah, we have about a continuing our Dorian run, we have about a dozen pieces this time. We took in a collection of maybe 50 or 60 pieces that we've offered over two previous auctions and one more auction coming up. Uh, and he had a number of pieces done of Vampirella. So this is one of those. No, I've always liked Dorian's work, so no, very nice. And there are others, like you said. In yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, not a Vampirella. We have Sheena, we have a Pam Anderson, then we have some of his different kind of interpretations of women as mermaids and so on and so forth. But mm -hmm. about a, I think about a dozen kind of um, very diverse selection. Well, very cool. So this again is ending Wednesday, starting to end Wednesday at nine o'clock, depending on the bidding. Yep. Uh, let's see, we've got a Universal Monsters piece. Let me highlight that one. So sticking with the monster theme, this and the, and the next piece, these were done in early 90s for yet another Universal Monster revival. What's interesting about this is the so you have kind of more realized uh, images here of Frankenstein Bride, Dracula, Frankenstein's monster uh, bride and Dracula. The faces were used multiple times on various packaging and advertising. So they cropped in. And so you'll see those on many different products. Uh, rarely do you see them in this full form. I'm not even sure this was used in its full form versus just the cropped images. Interesting. But large, uh, you know, colorful, mm -hmm. great interpretations. And uh, let's see, so no bids on this one yet, but $1,000 is where it starts. Yeah, the mummy wasn't on there. It was what it was no. the, the universal monster yeah. we were missing. And, and this uh, actually has product placement. So you have Snickers and Eminem. And again, not sure this actually became a, a published piece in any advertising campaign, but certainly that's what it was meant for. Mm -hmm. Halloween time candy. Hmm. It's kind of got a Lon Chaney sort of vibe going on there. And uh, what was the size on this one? Uh, this is almost, big as well. 20, 23 30. by 30. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, we have we have uh, a definite contingent of uh, famous monster collectors on CAF and um, people who like merchandising art. So this kind of fits. In well, both for, the, for the monster collectors, uh, check out the monster section of this auction and i think we have one piece coming up at the end we'll talk about but incredible selection of aurora models and there's some horror movie posters there's some other classic 60s merchandise it's a pretty strong universal slash general monster section now uh this most people will remember this one was kent williams uh havoc wolverine this is a, a pitch image i think it was written yeah. in, the, in the title so Todd can tell the story, but this actually all sort of unfolded with a lead at OAX. Yeah, I talked to George Pratt. Uh, I figured he'd have the answer, and then uh, I was able to get Ken to respond after I dropped George Pratt's name <laughs> as <laughs> to uh, what 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 might this have been used for. And he said this was when they were pitching uh, Havoc Wolverine series. So. Hmm. Well, yeah, George is the one. He, he, he yeah, he, he knows. So uh, that's cool. That's very cool. Was he? I'm sure he was happy to see it. No, you know, he loves looking at art. I, uh, yeah, yeah. So this, this is. Uh, I'm sure he was really pleased to see it. That's a nice. I, I like that. Yeah, I mean, I, a lot of yeah, a lot of people really 
love that Havoc Wolverine series. And um, there certainly isn't enough Kent Williams artwork out there for for art collectors to, to, to own that, you know, that played any role in a published book or something like this that helped secure, you know, the project. So uh, what do we have? We have $1,200 uh, bids on this one so far with a two to five thousand dollar range on it. I think it should end up at, at the high end of that. That's for sure. And then you have a you have a Deathlock cover by Dennis Cowan. You know yeah, that? this is another great one. I mean, I'm a big Deathlock fan from back in the Bronze Age, and you get this uh, great Punisher shirt image full of bullet holes. Mm -hmm. So it really just it feels like a Punisher cover yeah. almost more than a Deathlock, but uh, it's a great image. Hmm. Oh yeah. I'm sure Dennis would love to have this one back. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's, it's great. I mean, uh, to me, you know, as a Marvel guy, when I think of Dennis, I think of this before the question, but, um, yeah, but this is, uh, this is, this is beautiful. I mean, in what, what year? Nine, 92. 92. Yeah. It was early nineties. Yeah. That's fantastic. Wow. Uh, and bidding's at 2,500 already on that one. So you're already up within your estimates. I mean, this one should go on the, really should go on the high end of, uh, you, you have 5,000 on there. Uh, it should, it should be, should be at that range or a little bit more, I think. Yeah, that's great. Hmm. Let's see. Next up we have uh, Scott Eaton pages. How many pages are in total? 20. 20 pages, oh my gosh. From X Men Annual two thousand, so this one's already at uh, thirteen hundred dollars. How do you put this lot together? Yes. Yeah, it's a you know it was a large uh, grouping that someone had gotten uh, directly from Scott, um, and uh, we decided to offer it as you know the story pages we had. So there's some great images. It's all the characters from that time period. Uh, that Wolverine's a nice shot that uh, you just had up, but I think pretty much everybody's in there, one way or the other. There's a nice double page splash back there, I thought, right? Yeah. 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 It's actually a splash. Rogue's doing a cannonball, so it's a splash, splash. <laughs> Get it? Got it. <laughs> oh boy! Now we know why Todd gets paid the the big bucks at Hakes. Yep. <laughs> Hey, Todd. I watch so much, and, and I he does all of so Marcus, right. so Marcus has <laughs> infected me. I was very disappointed to get to see him at OAX. So next year, Marcus has to come to OAX. I oh, you didn't see that guy. You didn't see that standee. You know, I saw like, the standee. Yeah. Okay, you saw that. So you did kind of see Marcus, but you, sort of. yeah, <laughs> he was a little bit more real and in person than he is when he's in the chat. But uh, yeah, that's. Uh, I think we actually should roast Marcus. <laughs> um you probably see Bruno. On. <laughs> so this is a this is from 2000 this mm -hmm. issue but yeah so it's not a complete issue but you get 20 pages from it so that's uh that's something this will get this will start you on your path to try to completing it i'm sure whoever had this was you know probably had that in their mindset too that one day they could complete the book and uh, even though it's an annual, I mean, so it could be 30 some odd pages to get, right? Um, well, this could have been that, you know, the half of the issues that Scott had, and then the other half were maybe yeah. uh, Scott Hanna, I think. Right, that's uh, true. Well, they're very cool. I mean, this, this, is, this is a collection, that, this is something to get you started. <laughs> you know, if you yeah, want yeah, for uh, sure. it's, an, it's an easy way to get you going. So you're already over the, you know, the, uh, the range you put on this one uh with 20 pages i mean uh you know if it goes if it goes for five i mean that's that, that'd be on the low end at the end of the day right yeah I mean, if you do right. the math yeah, yeah it's, mean, it should be it should end up being a little bit more like seven or something but hey don't i'm i'm no expert i just uh but still that's awesome you know again People, people relish the opportunity to kind of get a jump on, on a book like that. So if it's something that, you know, there's somebody out there who this was their first book that they ever picked up off the stands, right? So, yeah, uh, yeah that's uh, there's there's a book in there for everybody. But uh, cool. This is great. Then uh, we got a uh, 
a 15 page near complete story kid colt jack keller artwork let's see this one this is our uh, second go around with the jack keller archives um last time was a pretty decent success so we're happy to have more mm -hmm. let's see how many pages are in this one it's near complete a uh, 15 page 15. 15. Yeah. Well, we, we've got Western collectors on calf too. So mm -hmm. I'm sure, uh, what are we at? Uh, we're starting at a thousand. Yes. So two to five estimate. Yep. That seems pretty reasonable. A lot of horses. Uh, I mean, I see the signatures here. Is that just, he, he signed some of the pages, but not all of them. Is that how, is that kind of how those yeah, are? Yeah, the detail of any page he signed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. Oh, very nice. What do we, so it's, uh, starting bid at a thousand. And then, uh, another Jack Keller. So this is a six page complete story. Kid Colt. That's a that's a nice title page. It is nice. If you like cowboys and classic Indians, this is a great uh, mm -hmm. opener. Yeah. No, I know a few collectors who uh, who probably would love to have this. Yeah. So five hundred dollar opening bid on this one doesn't have it yet, but it certainly will. Bid early, bid often. It's our motto. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, it's a good segue into sort of what you're looking at. Some things have multiple bids, some don't have any bids yet, some just have one. Yeah. You know, we're online for three weeks before they close at auction. And mm -hmm. there's plenty of activity throughout those weeks on all the different areas that we offer. But the most action happens on the closing days, and most no, of that action happens even in the closing hours. So you just yeah. never know. And we've had pieces that actually had a few bids up front and that's where it ended and then other things that are sort of a couple of bids or no bids and then who knows where it goes closing day so mm -hmm. um, just a lot of people don't follow the auction all the way through they may just come in on ending days we follow it all the way through so it's interesting to see what gets bid on early what gets bid on at the end mm -hmm. it's never there's no rhyme or reason it can be different every auction sure yeah nope i know how that goes i mean i I see stuff I don't, and I think I'm going to follow it and come back to it. And then I remember 10 minutes before the lots are closing. <laughs> I try to throw bids in. I mean, it, uh, it happens. Do you have, I mean, and, and I know that I've, I have placed some bids at Hakes before I haven't won anything, but I mean, is there, there are there easy ways to kind of like save bookmark to kind of favorite oh, things? Yeah. Yep. Come back to yeah, them. We, we, all we, that stuff's built in there. Once you're logged if, in, if you bid, you've got a bid list, win, lose or draw. And mm -hmm. there's also you can bookmark and watch items for sure. We try to make it as far as that go, goes as easy as possible for everybody to keep track of what they're bidding on or what they want to bid on. Mm -hmm. You send out an, like an announcement on the last day. Here's the uh, here's the status of the lots you're following that you haven't bid on yet and what the current. I mean, I, I assume you hit, you hit them up in many different ways. Yes. But yes. Uh, good. Very good. And even more um, coming. We will be having text messages we hope with the next auction so that will be in addition to outbid emails and a barrage of other emails and social media and so forth but text messages is something we've been working on and we hope to implement in our may online auction cool yep. everything's happening on the phone these days so yep. uh, you know the more ways you can you can get someone's someone's attention the better so that's mm -hmm. that's a wise wise move on your part um, so what are we looking at here? We, this is a, a Neil Adams sketch on a graded comic. Yeah, food, on, food on food. Boom. yeah. so yeah, this you want to talk about... This is from Marvel. Uh, this is the first one. Uh, you have, you know, classic uh, back in the day Stan Lee and multiple signed by some yeah. of the greats. And then you get this great uh, sketch on the uh, the back, which is just amazing. Yeah, it's Stranko's on here. Uh, Ramita... Uh, colon, Fushima. I mean, this this it goes it it goes on and on and on. It, unique is a, an overused term these days, especially with auction items. 
this is 100% unique. You will not find another to have this. If, if you're a deep dive Marvel guy, you know, Fuma is, is your jam. This was just a really cool publication. So to have the first issue signed by a who's who of Marvel's bullpen, and then to have this sketch mm -hmm. on the back in the little designated box by Adams, it to me, this is another one of those really special pieces. This is from the uh, Duke Caldwell collection. He is, for 33 years, he went around to every convention he could get his, he can get to all over the country uh, collecting signed comics. He would, uh, uh, I can't imagine how many times he met Stan Lee, but um, thousands. <laughs> it, it, it seems at this point he has 12,000 signed comics. So wow. this is one of them. Uh, and it, it goes all over the gamut. We, this is our second auction with him, and uh, we're working on more, more to come, more to come. So right. you, a lot of stuff is is freshly done by CBCS. Mm -hmm. um, they've been great to work with and has uh, helped us out. And first and foremost, identifying the signatures. Right, mm -hmm. they had to be authenticated before the book could even be graded. So this is a very long, uh, ongoing process. But they've been great to to work with and. Uh, there are a lot more books that will be coming their way. Yeah. And I, usually I say in future auctions. I'm In this case, I may say future years, right? That's how it's going to go down, yeah. I, I, there's a lot more I mean, to to come back, and, and I, there's going to be some unique opportunities to get signed comics that mm. you may have not have seen, like like this. I like, think like this one they were looking at right now. You said the word unique, I'll just use it again. But th this one is – This is. This one is special. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You got this one at six thirty-five right now with four bids. So, yeah, there are. Uh, mm -hmm. how, I forget how many other f signed fooms in this auction. There are. I think we have a dozen. Yeah, uh, signed fooms, all multi-sign, like, uh, uh, like like jam pieces almost, with mm -hmm. how many signatures are on there um, yeah. throughout the outside, inside, and then uh, many other comic books from his collection in this in this auction. So yeah, signed by writers and artists. Yep. Yep. Very cool. And uh, we've got a color guide. And we don't have Sean in here to talk about it. Sean Good. Rutan <laughs> would say this is a color guide. And everyone should love it. Is what he would say. And they didn't used to be worth anything. And now everybody loves them. And I've got my own collection of color guides and on and on and on. I, I think we've covered Sean. <laughs> Yeah, I got my eye on this one. This one, speaking speaking of interesting signatures, this one is signed by Stan Spidey Lee. I yeah. saw that. Hmm. Yes, which I think it is seems like it might have been a gift. Yes. Yeah. Um, the story is from the consigner. He was at Stan's house. Now this is, I mean, this is a story I got from a consigner. We're going to say it's true because every single story you hear is true, right? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And so he was at the Stan's house for. Uh, uh, tell me why he was there for a party or his, he was following his sister there he was at his house and basically Stan this was lying on a table Stan just said oh here, here's this sign didn't give it right over to him like just uh, in, in person it's like, like it was not saying it was it was um, garbage but it was just something that it was just he could give away and mm -hmm. uh, what, a, what a great piece to, to walk away from what, walk away with yeah. I wish I went to Stan's house for a party and right, <laughs> right. anything he'd give me color guide, uh, you know, garbage bag, whatever, right. exactly. the silverware, the plates, whatever <laughs> you can get. Yeah. Yeah. His car keys. Yep. And car. Yeah. yeah. And Sean, if you're watching, we kid because we care. Yes. Yes. He's true. a great get car well guy for this, for this Sean, get well soon. Right. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we do not joke. The importance of a color guides, they are important. Yeah, obviously. absolutely. They are. Yep. No, hey, I, you know, I, I've picked up a few in, in my time too. I mean, they're 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 fun, you know. I mean, they're not going to be for every OA collector out there, but you know, I think color guides definitely appeal to uh, to OA OA collectors a little bit, but in a lot of ways, it appeals to uh, you know comic book fans too because it, yeah. it is colored, it looks looks legit, at, you know, in its own way, and you know, it's just a, it's a different collectible. Um, so we got Cyclops on this one. So we know this is a valuable page. Uh, this know, take, here's the Gary Frank Sabretooth that you were talking about. So, you, yep. so this is, uh, you got Gene and Scott on this one. Beast. 
Not, not, yeah, no, not too bad on this one. So it's at 600 already. See, now Marcus is just going to have to eat his words on this one because it's Cyclops probably that's really driving the, <laughs> this. Not just Gary Frank, because Gary Frank, uh, you know, he's. we already know how much we like him. I didn't even movie. see Sabretooth until now. It's like kind of, if you look close, you can see him over yeah. all that Cyclops. Yeah, it's hard to see him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, this is cool. I mean, I... I, I I, I missed this when I was opening up the tabs. So um, that's that's awesome. So when was this? This is uh, from oh, from '96. Mm -hmm. I did not read the, uh, the uh, saber tooth for me at that moment in time. You know, wasn't uh, wasn't important enough to go back and read it. So I didn't actually didn't read this comic book. If you win this, Bill, we'll send you a free comic. Uh, if you can get Stan Lee to sign it, then you got a deal. <laughs> <laughs> I could probably find one. Stan Spidey. I know, I know a guy. <laughs> uh, all right no that's cool hey like i say there isn't enough gary frank marvel art out there so uh yeah and now i've got cyclops on this of all things too so yeah i'll, I'll be thinking about it uh let's see rudy Neveris. we've got a uh, uh interior page from deadly hands of kung fu 23 got seven bids so Definitely yeah. an interesting page. Look at Lights that. action page, Iron Fist, Silver Iron Dragon. Yeah. This is a great page. Yeah, I mean, this is, I mean, he drew, uh, you know, kung fu fighting scenes and mm -hmm. like, like nobody's business. Uh, you know, I was half expecting there to be not, you know, no borders on some of the, the this panel here at the bottom or something because he was just so good about, you know, drawing action, flowing, and letting the bodies kind of define the, uh, the panel areas. And so, the, you know, he's kind of doing that here in the last two panels with the word balloons kind of shaping out everything else. But yeah, I mean, this is, this is a great, uh, you know, never page for sure. I love this. And let's see, 473. Yeah, that's, that all seems about right to me uh, from 76, everybody, those magazines, you know, anybody who was out there buying comics, you know, during this era at the drugstore or whatever, we're also picking up the magazines as well. I got, you know, Hulk was going out and those were always fun. You know, they were all, you know, not colored. They just had a different look feel. And uh, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, all that ink wash on uh, mm -hmm. those magazines was great. Uh, I think uh, the Dracula ones really stand mm -hmm. out because I really set some mood with those. But uh, uh, all the martial arts stuff is just great. And uh, it really goes well with his style of art. Mm -hmm. There are even some people buying the Conan magazines, believe it or not, Bill. I don't believe it. I can't. I, 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 I don't. That guy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. The Conan. Conan I'd like huh? to. Uh, it's a little out of my price. Right no, I'm now. saying you were buying the magazines back then. Oh, the magazines. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I got in trouble in school for bringing in, you know. Sketchy material, <laughs> right? Right. Well, so many good stuff came out in there, you know, like uh, Moon Knight, you know, and and uh, and the Marvel premiere stuff. I mean, there was a lot of good, yeah, a lot of great stories and things came out of those magazines. That uh, you know, if you were if you were strictly collecting the comics, you missed out on a lot of a lot of good good yeah. stories, definitely. Yeah, and then you look that. at the artwork that came from that era. Uh, you know, they had by and large, you know, all of them had fantastic painted covers. Right, that you weren't really getting in comics at the time. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, to me, they it was like it's like getting an art book, basically. You know, because it's oversized and everything. It's bigger than your comics, and um, yeah. So no, I know this is great. Savage Sword always had like a couple stories. You got a couple pinups that had nothing to do with the book. You know, it was really just great content, and you know, I can't get enough of you know uh, John Buscema and uh, Chan and all the other greats that were doing the work back then mm -hmm. they did cost a little bit more brian you're absolutely right yep. brian said they had their own pricing it's true you know i couldn't buy every magazine that was coming out of it if it had a head of a good cover that was kind of my uh you know if it, if it had that you know um and typically so i picked up mostly hulk the marvel premiere stuff i remember when the moon knight book came out i mean you could not pick that one up so um i didn't buy a lot of savage sword though i hate to tell you that todd Oh, that's okay. Not for everybody. <laughs> uh, what do we got here? We got a Mar uh, Marshall Rogers Diddley Hands of Kung Fu. So that one's already at four ninety five. Yeah, it, this this kind of stuff. And I didn't look at this one earlier, but Rogers is just so hard to mm. hard to come by. 
uh, yeah. I mean, and this is you know great action with the daughters, daughters of the dragon. I mean, really yeah. cool page. Wow. Yeah, this is this is nice. It's interesting the, the colors. I mean, I'm sure it's scanned close to you know the this the ink washes are they have like a little blue tint to them or something. So it's uh, yeah, it's a little different. But uh, but no, it's awesome. You don't mess with the daughters of the dragon. I mean, look, yeah. he tore he tore her disco outfit. Mm -hmm. now, <laughs> they're all going down at this point. Look at Missed that. Missed Colleen had it going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but but again, Marshall Rogers stuff. You know, from this era, just you know, you're not going to get it, uh, too much out of it. I mean, you love it. people love this Batman, obviously, but yeah, the um, Batman you're more likely to run into, but Marvel stuff mm -hmm. a little tougher yeah. for sure. Definitely. So no, this this is uh, this is awesome. So that one's at almost five hundred dollars. So yeah, that's going to easily hit uh, hit the price range, and it's got an overlay with the with the, with the word bubbles and balloons yep. and copy. So cool. And Marcus, nice. I was, Marcus, I was going to say that, but I'm trying to keep it professional here. Play. <laughs> <laughs> They didn't put those down on the low shelf, though, Marcus. They did not. No, they even even the uh, you know Vampirella was on the top shelf mm -hmm. when I'd go to the drugstore. To, you know, the, yeah. the comics and the Marvel magazines would be on the lower shelf, but you know, up with like the guns and ammo and everything, you know, on the top shelf, it was still mm -hmm. in the aisle. But yeah. that was where Vampirella was, and I couldn't reach it. I know that. I knew I could because I'd be like <laughs> looking at that thing, and you know, I'm I'm curious about it because they wouldn't put it up there if they didn't want me to get access to it but I, yeah i always had a pogo stick with me <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh all right so we got we got some kung fu still we've got uh a rafael lopez sb uh these are those uh you know this, he did many spanish versions of marvel books when they re reprint them so uh let's click on that and see that i think i was gonna say they're usually kind of uh almost comic book size right i think or around where's the size yeah, yeah 10 by 14. 10 by four, there it is at the front. Mm -hmm. yeah. The, yeah. Um, so yeah, that, very unique. I mean, and Raphael had a, had a very good career redoing yeah. uh, Marvel covers. That's for Yeah, sure. we have had many dozens and dozens over the last couple of years. He was incredibly prolific. Uh, and it was, it's always interesting to see what he does with the cover. Sometimes it's pretty much an exact copy. Maybe the coloring is a little different. Sometimes he'll change some things around and there are times where he'll take elements from panels and make that the cover versus what the U S cover was. Uh, mm -hmm. they're, they're colorful. They are much more affordable than if you were buying the U S covers of these. So I like offering them. I have a few in my collection. I, I think he was a, a very interesting artist. And so we'll have a few covers coming up that he did. And then I'm, I don't think I'm, I'm showing one, but we have about, a dozen sketches, commission sketches that he did of various Marvel characters. All of those start at just a hundred dollars. So if you wanted a nice piece of color SB art, we've got a pretty wide uh, selection this time in collector friendly prices. Hmm. Awesome. This one's at uh, three ninety right now, and we got another one right here. Let's say Captain America. I think we have a few Cap fans out there. This one's priced at six sixty right now. Again, we don't have Sean to comment on how wonderful Captain America is. So, Todd, <laughs> you want to do your best Sean impression here? <laughs> yeah, this was a great one. This was one, uh, again, where they, uh, I believe this was uh, an inside uh, panel that they kind of reimagined a little bit and made it a cover image. Yeah, not bad. It's a, it's a prison prison episode right there for sure la decision <laughs> or something uh yeah very nice and again 660 on this one we got another one here look we go to it's the, oh yeah defenders for sure and i'm a sucker for the wrecking crew so i think this is a cool one yeah Luke Cage letting the Hulk do all the fighting. <laughs> He's just cheering him on. Uh, yeah, those, these are fun. Mm -hmm. You know, 
I mean, then uh, we've seen, you know, the, the, the UK books with the different uh, covers redone. I mean, that was kind of a format difference, really. But, uh, but you know, it makes sense to, uh, if you're going to appeal to a different group of uh, people from, from another country, you know, you might as well have, uh, have the color, you know, the cover is kind of redrawn mm -hmm. in a style that's going to be appealing to them, even if it's just a subtle change, right? Yeah. Well, um, this is one where they missed a couple of color cues on... Uh, the wrecking crew um he shouldn't have a bald head sticking out it should have a mask on there so right. it's funny when you see these things where like some lines are a little different or they uh recolored in a different way but it, it's it's based on the u uh, on a u.s cover and then so the content can be different. i mean the contents are straight up reprint of the u.s yeah. comics right, right. Exactly. some can be two or three issues in one you know, some are sometimes they combine two uh, totally different titles. So it was a weird mix of contents. And then they just decided what was going to be the cover theme. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Well, there's a lot of Defenders fans out there. So this one's almost at $400. Now we got people commenting on my wardrobe. This is, by the way, this is print. That's why I had this on. So. Uh, the Jesse Pinkman wardrobe. It does kind of look like Jesse Pinkman. Boy, yeah, Fish is, Fish is very observant. I, I don't know Jesse Pinkman. From Breaking Bad. Oh, no, I, never, I didn't watch that. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> it's okay. You're, you, it, the Marvel Comics shirt is the thing that say, is the saving grace there, Alex. Okay. Because otherwise, <laughs> yeah, you do look just like Jesse Pinkman. Right. Uh, in one of his probably um, you know less than stellar moments, he was wearing, he would be wearing a, a hoodie just like that one. Uh <laughs> So next up, what do we got? We got an Avengers nine page from that, uh, uh, from his, uh, uh, from George Perez. And this was like, this is what, like volume, I can't even remember. Is this three, four, whatever, but yeah, it, three, maybe I remember, you know, when this stuff came out, um, this, this is like right around when I started collecting and I, and I always wanted to get a page from the run and it was always mm -hmm. hard because you'd have guys going in there and buying like, you know, half the book or six or eight yeah. pages. And, um, I remember seeing a lot of these pages at the, first wizard show that i bought art at and uh they were and they were also a little bit a little bit pricier even back then you know you see a page that's uh you know 200 250 and i can buy another published page for half that or under 100 dollars. i was i stuck to that my first show but i i, I wish i had picked up a few of these <laughs> right that's uh, Jimmy eisenberg I'm sorry so, yeah. <laughs> Uh, the labs next going over this is books. going over Alex's head right now. No, so. I do now that I know my wife watched that, so now I understand this. That was the uh, the other guy that played the dentist on Seinfeld. That's correct. Yep, you got yes. it. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yeah, see, I get that. Uh, <laughs> no, but what I was going to say is, as much as I like art, I'm a text guy too. I like I like the writing and Kurt Music combined with Prez on this run, and especially the triathlon storyline. I thought it was fantastic. So that's a, a marginal character, maybe in the grand scheme of things, but I think this is a great page because of, of that character. Yeah, no, this is great. I mean, just looking at it, it's got everything you want in the Perez layout and everything. So yeah, uh, you're at 226 on this one right now. And yeah, no, that's, that, that's a good example from the run. Al Bay inks. Al, Al was always very, uh, very consistent inker, I think, and definitely didn't, uh, it definitely did all the things he needed to do to keep this thing looking like a, a Perez page. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's pretty complex paneling. And you get a little bit of, you know, you get a little Hawkeye there. So at least you could say, you know, it's got a hero in there for you. Mm -hmm. And it's a nice image. Cool. Another good one. Uh, let's see here. So uh, Ron Lim, Wild Thing, number two, splash page or title page. Sorry. Let's switch over to here. Here we go. There can be only one. You've heard that before. Uh, no, not bad. I mean, you know, again, back to uh, if you're looking for a Ron Lim example, it, it might not be from, you know, my wild thing may not be the thing you were thinking of, but, um, you know. Well, this is your obscure J2 character and his father juggernaut going at it. So you have a little bit of an X-Men curve in here. Mm -hmm. um, the J2 characters, you know, either you like it or maybe not, but it's a, it's, it's a nice dynamic image. 
Yeah, well, he he definitely, uh, his dad doesn't care for him, at least in that one moment. Uh, but no, it's cool. There can be only one. Al Williamson inks on this one, too. So $200 opening bid for that. Now we've got a, oh, an Al Jaffe fold-in. Everybody needs an Al, uh, one of these. I mean, look at this. This is at $1,200 already with just two bids. Um, let's highlight that. Anybody that grew up in the heyday of Mad Magazine, you know, knows how much time we spent staring at this and folding it and unfolding these these pages there. Uh, just amazing to come up with the concept and, and how they do that, right? To uh, make two images. Well, the more. text, to get the text to line up and mm -hmm. actually read, it makes sense. It's, it's pretty cool. So. Uh, you could be the first one to take this art and actually fold the art. <laughs> you, you should, we need to put it, even though it says it right there, we did not fold the art. It's just what we've done there. Yeah, I, I digitally did it so you could actually see it and read it. Um, but, you know, if you were a particular kid like I was, you know, like collecting even as a young guy, you'd take those things and you'd just get them, you know, that you weren't creasing it. <laughs> so you could see the, try and see the image. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Oh, I, I hey at the drugstore I was doing it. So I, you know, but like you just said, you just wanted to see what the gag was. Yeah. But uh, what are we? We're at twelve hundred dollars. I mean, again, these these are things that uh, you know uh, collectors appreciate for the art and just for the fond memories. You know, the nostalgia that uh, that these pieces of art bring. I mean, they they're they're just something that again, if you grew up in the seventies, these you just it's part of you, you know, one way or another. I mean, I didn't buy buy a lot of Mad Magazines back in the day, but it's like my uncles always had them laying around. And, you know, I mean, you saw them all the time. And, yeah, so this is cool. I'd love to have a a, a, a Jaffe example in my collection. Um, yeah. But, yeah, the, now they're, you know, they're just, they're going to be harder, you know, so hard to get anymore. But, uh, but it's great that yeah. you have one in the in the auction. Uh, and then we have something else from Matt here, a Don Martin piece. Let me highlight that. Crazy style, as everybody knows. I mean, look at that. I love, I mean, just look at the detail in this and just the goofy faces. I mean, and, you know, we, to this day, you know, we love artists, you know, like, like Don Martin or, or uh, Fred Hembeck because of their interesting takes on yep. anatomy and, you know, and their characterizations of people. I mean, Martin had a flair that, uh, you know, what is you couldn't copy this i mean his style was just so unique i mean this thing is this is fantastic mm -hmm. wow and again you don't see this stuff too often you know and i hang out at berkey's house you know i used to hang out there a lot i can't say that berkey ever had a piece of don martin art mm -hmm. that i you know and the thousands of pieces i've gone through so this stuff just you don't you don't see it mm -hmm. hardly ever um so this this is really nice to see wow now what do we uh what do we got so yeah see i didn't even look at where it was at it was it's almost at seventeen hundred dollars uh yeah I, I yeah it's gonna do do very well It'd be well within it well into your uh uh estimated range yeah yeah it's fantastic i mean I, yeah i'd love to own this thing it's great nice very nice uh okay we got a uh star trek so it's a painting by Wendy Peeney. And now for something very different. <laughs> wow. Now I can't say, I mean, it definitely looks like Wendy's style. That's yeah. Yeah. mid seventies pre elf quest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're getting into her start doing, you know, sort of fantasy and sci-fi uh, material. And uh, this is just a nice, nice image. And it's, you know, early. Yeah, I have not uh, owned anything by by Wendy. I've always wanted to. That's why Marcus has given me the Raz in the in the chat. Um, I say it all the time. It's like I've always wanted to have something by her, and I've actually I've tried to win a few auctions here or there, and I, I always fail. So, uh, regrettably, but one day I'll have something by Wendy. So. Are you a Star Trek fan, Bill? My wife is a big Star Trek fan. That's well, so if, if she were to see this, she could probably convince me that I should be bidding. <laughs> What's your, uh, what's your email address? <laughs> you email address? Yeah. Oh, well, you know, I always wanted an ElfQuest example, right? But, you know, it's like, 
this may this this may be my starter piece, right? Because <laughs> yeah. I'm striking out on the ElfQuest, uh, you know, commission piece style pieces that are out there every time. You know, I think like, all right, I can get it for this price. I know it it won't go over that, and I feel like I'm at market, and then it always goes ten or fifteen percent over what I think it should be, which is how most of these things go for for us. You know, as buyers, you, you know, you you think you know the market. There's always somebody who's willing to spend a little bit more than than the market is. Uh, you know, w you know wants to. Uh, Want, which is, where it should be market wise, but um, but no, this is cool. I mean, I've never, you know, typically with Wendy stuff, you, it's not edge to edge, right? It's just when you see a characterization piece of any kind, and mostly off west, it's always just going to be the central figure. I mean, this is kind of cool, you know, it looks like it should have been a finished piece published somewhere because mm -hmm. it's uh, edge to edge like that, and it has a bid at a thousand, see, with the range of two to five. And uh, s s speaking of Star Trek, I see uh, Alex had a you know, you've got a you have a theme running through this. You you know you you keep things consistent. We're we're in monsters now. We're in you're Star just, Trek. You're just now getting that, Bill. You know, uh, yeah, I, I'm slow slow on the. Uh, uh, you it's know. okay. It's uh, it's, it's, it's <laughs> I've got another theme. It's a pink slip up and a pink slip down. <laughs> How about that theme? You'll be sorry. Bring it on. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, all right, so who's the artist on this one? Morris Scott Dollins, and it's a uh, fanzine. Uh, so it was it published in something? It's on sixteen by twenty board. Yeah, co just a cover of a fanzine. Yeah. The Enterprise orbiting a red dwarf. I mean, I'm not familiar with the artist, but hey, it's a large Star Trek painting. It's not going to break the bank. <clears throat> he looks really great in person. <clears throat> Actually, Mike did a good job. I think Mike did this description. It says that he painted at least 1,700 uh, paintings, covers, and so on and so on. Prolific. Yeah, it's not a household name. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm sure there are you know, a lot of artists like that, right? Mm. That work for studios or, or just had that uh, ability to get work done on time. And, they, and there are people that will almost never never know of um but yeah star trek fans here's a piece for you and then uh, i saw this one but i knew it was gonna go for, see it's already brightson's another guy you know another artist just like wendy Peeney that i need to get an example from one day and uh this one's at eleven hundred dollars and yeah it's fantastic i think yeah. wasn't wasn't this one of the pieces in the mailing i feel like you know i might have seen like a sliver of the character in there and i went and looked at it maybe i'm wrong but i know that i've seen this piece over over there since you started the auction and uh yeah oh yes yeah, so it was you're correct yeah yeah it was part of the email yeah okay but yeah i mean this is this is great you know um for those of us who, who loved his little um his, his run with the stephen king's uh werewolf books that uh you know this 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 is nostalgic and it makes you uh you know i i'd love to own this piece looks you know it's very well finished mm -hmm. um yeah the ink works amazing it's nice it's it's 14 by 17. I was going to say, yeah, it's huge, too. I mean, you wouldn't, you'd expect it to be a little bit smaller than that. But uh, no, this is fantastic. Yeah. Does it have it? Was it dated? I'm looking at the. Uh, I, don't believe, I don't believe it was. No. I don't no think date. so. No date. No, that's all right, though. Doesn't matter. Looks, uh, looks a good, you know, he's, he's, Definitely got all his chops on this piece. So this is very nice. It's uh, you get a two to five thousand uh, dollar range on this one, and it's uh, halfway to the low end. I mean, yeah, you, it's gonna it's gonna get in the into the high end of of that for mm -hmm. sure. Wow, well, I'm liking it. And uh, let's see. Well, we did see this one before. Let's see. That was the Dorian. Uh, now we have a. Uh, Michael Turner, which played Aztec trading card. Mm -hmm. Detron Inks. You know, there's a lot of trading card art collectors out there. You saw them at OAX, I, I imagine. Hey, Bill. We, yeah. You're, you're, using the, you're using the old email that uh -oh. I had the wrong link. Can you, are you able to on the fly bring up the milk and cheese art? That's what was supposed to be where the other one was. And I'm I don't sorry. Really miss that. I thought yeah. I got, you know, I, I thought I switched to the right one when I was pulling it, but. Uh, I apologize for that, Alex. Am I going to have another mess, a mistake here coming up? No, after that, we're good. Okay. 
Yeah, but I don't want to miss this because this got a great deal of attention, rightly so, at OAX. So this one's uh, this one's at thirteen hundred dollars right now. It's done on eleven by seventeen board, and uh, you know, Evan Dorkin. Yeah. So this was done in two thousand one when Gray Morrow passed. There was a charity auction to raise money for his widow, and this piece was done by Dorkin back then. The auction happened, but a small amount of art got misplaced, and it wasn't until now that that little pile got unearthed. In the meantime, this piece was actually in the deluxe milk and cheese hardcover published in the back in the bonus material and even says it was for the Gray Morrow auction. So while that's true, it just took 20 plus years for it to happen. So this is a really stunning, you know, you got the uh, milk and cheese in, in all their glory on here. It looks like we thought it was a cover when it first came to us till we did our research. It looks like a cover. Um, as far as, and I'm a big milk and cheese fan, have been since day one. This is as good as it gets if you want Evan's milk and cheese work. Wow. That's amazing that it was found and uh... comes with a handwritten note, comes with the original envelope in his hand, all sort of documenting that time period. Hmm. And the mark in this case is Mark Wheatley, who helped put the auction together. Weekly, okay. Was sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, well, that's really cool. That's really, really cool. So, well into your estimate range, thirteen hundred dollars for it. Um, I can see that. You know, there should definitely be a lot of interest for that one. Wow. Um. So now, so it's yep. okay to show this one yep. now. No, Sorry. we're good. Yep. All right. So this is that uh, Witchblade trading card art by uh, by Turner and Detron's inks on it. And uh, it's, let me see here, let me enlarge this. You know, this is stunning work by, by Turner as he did. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, amazing style, amazing detail. So it's uh, it's on an 11 by 17 board and it, image area looks like it's uh, what, like six by eight, something like yeah. that. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. I was wondering if someone, someone was going to make a lactose intolerant joke and they couldn't let it go. No, yeah. heck no. <laughs> no, it did not market. Mark, yeah. are you asleep out there? That should have been you. That was, that was like hanging out there low fruit. <laughs> you, he didn't say mm, dairy, so you know, he, he yeah, was thinking he, about it. He was, yeah. <laughs> but thank you, Dave, for that one. Uh, but no, this is, obviously, this is a really nice piece. It's I his mean, nice piece. Yeah, Turner's work. I've only seen uh, maybe one other, maybe two uh, pieces uh, from this series by him. Mm -hmm. So, so there. I don't know how many he did for the series, but not many have sold. Well, very nice. So this is at uh, six hundred dollars so far. One mm -hmm. to two thousand dollar estimate should uh, you know easily reach that the high end of the estimate. Maybe go a little bit higher. Just depends on uh, you. Got to get it out to the card card art collectors. So those trading card yeah. guys are crazy, fervent fans. They would you know be really into that. Um, then we got a uh, uh, 1930 yeah 1936 strip. This one's at four thousand one hundred eighty dollars. Yeah, 1936. This is uh, wow. <laughs> this is a great example piece right here. That's yeah, the last panel that sells it. I mean that's oh, the yeah. definitive Sea Hag image. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, the world of Popeye dailies, this is a special one. Mm -hmm. Um just the, the exact right time period. Um actually I'm curious, I don't remember when this started, when he started the the, the strip. This is not too far into it. Um but yeah, the one one sim very similar to this is Todd was doing some research. Uh the 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 previous day, following day, Todd. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, and this was um, the date on this is Christmas Day, right? Yeah, December thirty sixth, twenty fifth, thirty sixth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, it was the twenty fourth. It was very similar, sold for roughly twenty thousand dollars. So um, I think this is this this um, could hit close to that, but this one is a is a, a great example of of his work. Yeah, agree. This also nice. shows how we like to keep our estimates conservative, right? That that was a one-off. If we had four or five sales 
it oh, was yes. very strange. But it, it was so we're we're conservative five to ten. Wouldn't surprise us if this this goes right. over that at all. Right. And there was it, it may have been a, a different time of the market. And you were mentioning in like uh, uh, of the market and where things you think would land in the market. And I think it's interesting for original art. I think each piece has its own market because it's all original. It's all one of a kind. So to say that, that there's a market for a certain kind, it's I think each it, it, it can vary for each piece. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. um, this was, uh, uh, I, I Googled it. So 1929 was this, the start date uh, for, with EC on the strip, but uh, but still, even in the first seven, you, you don't expect to see stuff like, you know, many of these pieces still, you know, around. And mm -hmm. uh, now this is a great, great, great example. Really, yes. really nice. Wow. So what we had, I didn't even look, what was your uh, estimate? You had a five to 10? Five to 10. Yeah. Well, that's one that, uh, that I would follow to see where it ends up at. It had some action early. This and the milk and cheese both had early action. And I think uh, they have a long way to go. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Can we get a uh, Charles Schultz sketch. That's got a bid at a uh, starting bid at a thousand. And this is a big drawing. It's a nine by 12 sheet of paper. This fills most of that page. And this isn't one of his smaller sketches. And the provenance behind this, it's first of all, it's been authenticated by, by JSA, but it came from the estate of a person who organized the Macy's Thanksgiving parade. And there were a lot of Peanuts characters in that parade. And he and Schultz became friends. So there's a nice backstory with this other than just a sketch that he did. Well, that's... Uh... Everyone who collects OA would love to have a Schultz in their collection, even if it's a, uh, uh, you know, something like that. A quick sketch, I mean, at nine by twelve, and that's 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 a very nice piece to have. And with the with the provenance that goes with it, even better because there's enough fakes out there and things like yeah. that. But clearly, you know, th this one isn't, and uh, so it's already got a bit at a thousand to get it started. That's that's not too bad. Anything we ever offer for Schultz must come with. The proper paperwork because yes fakes of that dr seuss bob kane are rampant mm -hmm. yeah we know all about bob kane on this channel mm -hmm. i'll tell you that but uh but yeah those are the you know because their styles were such that uh you yeah. could actually kind of mm -hmm. mimic them if you were an artist you know and, and the sad truth is is that a lot of the fakes that are out there have come from people you know not like a professional in the field but an artist, you know, you know, it's, that's why they do them because they're actually creatives to begin with, so they can actually do it. So it's it sucks. Um, but anyways, this is a, this is a nice piece. Should do uh, should do well. And then uh, you got a jam piece that's got uh, Schultz and Lance on it. And so this is on a, a comic backer board, but a nice mix of characters, uh, most with their creators, you know, Lance and Schultz and Smokey and. And Pink Panther. So we had a similar piece last time that had a Snoopy uh, by Schultz and also had a Batman by Bob Kane. This is a totally different lineup on this one outside of, I think, that had Lance and Schultz. Um, right, yeah. But the other four in here are different. Certainly having Fritz on here with Pink Panther, I think, puts it over the top for me. Mm -hmm. And again, authenticated by PSA and actually encapsulated so you get a a slabbed piece of art for those that are into such things. Well, you're already uh, five bids over a thousand and into your price estimate. So that, that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, let's see here. Well, do you still insist it's an island? <laughs> this is a, is this a Geisel? Is that what it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, starting bid at a thousand on this one. It's large. It, 21 by 27. Large, uh, early, uh, unsure if published, but you know, there's so many different cartoons like this for newspapers and for magazines and so forth. Uh, this also has a good provenance. It comes from the state of animator and director T period he, H E E, H E E E. So a number of pieces came from his estate for uh, the disc consigner bought, and this one he gave to us for this auction. So a, a very interesting um, Seuss piece before he was the Seuss, mm -hmm. before Cat and Hat and all that. 
And that rhyme was intentional. <laughs> no, it's, I think it's awesome. I mean, I've, I've never seen uh, an illustration like that from him before, but uh, stylistically, it's all right, right? So, no, this looks this is pretty cool. I wouldn't be uh, I wouldn't be ashamed to hang that on my wall at all. I think it's fantastic. All right, somebody's asking about the number one Marvel fan about the payment yeah. plan. Uh, yep. Payment due two weeks after the auction, uh, but we do have a layaway, <coughs> and depending on what the pieces are, it can be even an extended layaway. We just need to know before the auction closes what those pieces are. We can go to the consigner and see if we can work out a plan. So reach out to us at hakes at hakes.com with any questions about that, what items um, we're willing to work with all of the bidders that way. He says he's interested in the uh, Philly Marvel gum cards. I'm not sure what those are. Are they in a, are they anything in the uh, that we're showing tonight? Uh, I don't think so. There, we have a pretty big uh, non-sport uh, gum card section. Those are in that. Um, they did. They actually are. I think you're talking about the sticker set, right? I think we have an uncut sheet for the stickers, and then the sticker set as well sticker set is from the roxanne toaster collection which is um, a pedigree she goes back to the 70s was one of the first people to organize non-sport conventions uh started the uh rapper or the uh, non-sport update magazine so a pretty um prestigious pedigree collection that we started selling last auction and we'll be selling over the next year sorry i had to go and find it yeah, that looks pretty cool. Actually, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that's a well. Mar uh, number one Marvel fan has a good eye for for art, for movie props, and uh, and definitely you know a lot of different memorabilia. But uh, I won't show it. <laughs> but it's really awesome. Uh, just go. You, what you need to do, everybody, is you go to hakes.com and just search for Marvel stickers, and you'll see it. But a reason to go to the site tonight. Um, very, very nice. And, and the uh, Geisel is very nice as well. And then we have a uh, little Lulu strip from 1944. That's nice. Look at that. It's another prime example. And you get, you know, both characters, not just Lulu. You get Tubby as well. So nice gag, uh, you know, for, for people that are into the Lulu strip art. We were, when we did our research to try and come up with the estimate, this was as good as any I saw. Oh heck yeah! No, I mean that's uh, it's well finished. The, the wash on it looks, you know, like exactly what you'd want. Well, the sepia with the uh, with the gray tones on there. That's that's really nice. Uh, I just want to read it. So it's uh, almost eight by eight, seven and three quarter by eight and a quarter. Yeah, that's uh, that's a nice piece. Five hundred dollar opening bid. Doesn't have a bid yet, but uh, there's no way it won't. That's fantastic. And then we get a Chester Gould, Dick Tracy Sunday from 1953. So we actually have three this time. I think we have two Sundays and a daily. Uh, this is the earliest and I think the best of the three pieces that we have. Yeah, it's Christmas Sunday. It's great. Oh, yeah, that's really, really nice. Hmm. No, sorry. Yeah, there's in, in the back to you know collectors for everything, right? There are uh, there's collectors out there who love collecting Christmas related <laughs> artwork. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so that that's appealing, and a, a a Gould from an era where you would really like to get a, an example from them as well. And yeah, and again, you know, this is funny because you look back at a lot of the the Sundays from Gould, and they do tend to have that. This, these even panel layouts like that and it works mm -hmm. you know, at first it almost looks a little weird but it, it's when you think about gould style it actually he, he, he at least he was always consistent with the way he, you know he did things i mean not every layout for a sunday is going to look like this but um you see it see it done like this you know it's a gould and uh it's it's fine i like it a lot uh let's see here oh pogo we have a uh Pogo Sunday strip as well. So this is a great looking Sunday. It's just a Pogo less Pogo. Mm -hmm. So you get these frog characters, which did not make many appearances, at least in the research that we found. 
but they're in every uh, panel. Uh, good content with the text. It's a great looking page. It will just be um, easier in your pocketbook than one that's loaded with Pogo and the main characters. Yeah, no, I mean, it's a, it's a great example of uh, Walt Kelly's work. That's, that's for sure. I've never, again, an artist I've never owned anything by, but uh, that's nice. So no bids on it yet. It's opening bid at 500 and a range of one to two thousand. So uh, makes sense. All right. Now I think we're getting into the, a few yeah. ephemera pieces, but things, things in the hobby. Yeah. A handful of miscellaneous things, although a couple are art adjacent as we'll get to. I just want to quickly touch on the comic books. You know, yet again, we have 300 or so uh, CGC or CBCS certified, authenticated, graded comic books. This one's special. Uh, First Poison Ivy, 9.4, very high grade for this book. There are over 3,700 copies in the CGC census. There are, are only 11 copies higher. So this is yeah. a prime example of a key Batman title, Batman book. And it's already at uh, fourteen thousand four hundred dollars, so mm -hmm. clearly a desirable book. And uh, yeah, that's in nine point four. Uh, you know, I don't follow the comic market, uh, you know, as much as I should. But uh, twenty to thirty-five thousand is a is a fair range. It's a wide range, but uh, yeah, this thing's going to do pretty well, man. That's great. So who's the comics person in the at Hakes? Who does who's who's that their focus, or is it everybody wears the same hat? It's everybody Kelly here, Kelly. everyone on screen, plus another three or four. We have okay. we have a lot of people who can step up and do comics. Whether it's talk to a consigner, um, submit them to, to CGC or CBCS, mm -hmm. uh, describe them. Yeah, it, it, we're we're a family of comic book geeks first and foremost. So we were raised on comic books and. Yeah, a lot more than can speak on 1930s Disney. You know, that, that falls on me and me only versus mm -hmm. comic books that we have a, a group of people. Well, it makes sense. I just figured that there had to be more more than the three of you because, you know, a lot of comics come through, the comic art. There's there's no way it could just be, just be you guys. So, uh, cool. Very cool. Uh, let's see what the next piece is. Batman Puppet Theater. So this is a very special piece of Batman merchandise. We talked earlier about the puzzle art. Mm -hmm. The Batman and Robin puppets came with vinyl bodies and with fabric bodies, and they are everywhere. Uh, actually, cases of the Batman with bag with a header card turned up decades ago. They also came boxed individually, Batman and Robin, and boxed together, Batman and Robin. The only way you got Joker was with this Sears exclusive puppet theater. So you got this big cardboard uh, theater that you would assemble, and then you could put on puppet shows with these three. And, and Joker only came with a fabric body. So uh, on its own, very desirable, and you don't see it often. Complete set, you rarely see. We have a complete unused set with the original shipping box. So this is one of very few that is complete and in this condition. Very interesting. Yeah, this is this is one that you you know you, you couldn't put on the puppet show by yourself. You had to have a friend. I think if you're going to have all three in there at one time, but that's cool. Um, I mean, it looks literally brand new, right? It, it is. I mean, we actually they all three puppets also have the original plastic bags. They were just plain uh, generic plastic bags that had a piece of tape that held them shut, but the tape has dried. So we were able to take the puppets out and shoot them without the plastic. Uh, but essentially, they have the cardboard inserts, as you can see there. Yeah, mm -hmm. th this is it. outside of a set being sealed, uh, the box that is, you won't find a better one. Oh, I see. So they put an insert in there to keep the shape. Yeah. Oh, that was smart. Boy, would they be ruined if uh, yeah. without that? That's wow. So the, they had the forethought even back in the day that uh in order to make sure that something would would last they were probably thinking it last you know six or eight months before some kid well, would buy it not not all these years they also did that for the like i said the ones that come in the display bags with a header card 
to keep mm -hmm. it from just kind of flopping around in there. So it, it held its shape on display. They did that for the Marvel uh, puppets. There's really rare Spider-Man, Captain America. Uh, they also did it for the Batman, uh, Robin, Wonder Woman. All of them are classic 60s superhero mer merchandise, but n nothing more so than this. There's probably the top 10 most desirable Batman toys. It's just uh, a, with the fact that you only got Joker in this set, that's what really puts it over the top. Mm -hmm. So where we are, we're going to be a $2,000 opening bid on this one. Uh, let's see here. Next up, Mary Marvel original art for a pin. So this is another art adjacent piece. So what you're looking at there is fully realized painted artwork for what was going to be an oval pin issued by Fawcett in the 1940s. In, in the 1940s, Fawcett did tons of what are called premiums, mail away items, um, buttons and, and pins and, and all kinds of toys and paper goods and so forth. But to find any original art for any of that is incredibly rare. So that's what the pin became it was actually a die cut kind of fiber wood piece rather than oval it's by the green duck company green duck is one of the most famous button manufacturers so this is all documented this art comes in this uh folder from the company and it includes an example of the pin and this is from the legendary harry matetsky collection for those that don't know harry matetsky he passed away at the end of last year he was a good friend of all of uh us at hakes he was a lifelong collector from a kid on up. He was also a historian. He wrote an incredible Superman book uh, on the merchandise from day one up until the 80s when he did the book. He also worked on a Captain Marvel book that he did with um, Chip Kid. Uh, Chip Kid, I should say, did the book, but all of the items in it were from Harry Matetsky's collection. So a very uh, important figure in the hobby. And this comes from his very incredible collection of not only Fawcett, but DC and Marvel. And he was in you know, all comics in general, but he, he had a, a love not only for the comics, but all the premium. So the Superman rings that were advertised in action comics and all of that stuff, uh, that, that was his forte. Mm. I'm sure it's an honor to uh, to be the ones auctioning off his, uh, his collection, right? I mean, yeah. someone who contributed that much to fandom and yeah. was such a fan of uh, the art and the merchandise. That's, that's yeah. great. And then you go back to the, the unique term again, could be overused, not in the term, not in the context of Harry Matesky, as these two guys can attest. That man was unique and, and we all love him. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what we got next here. We got a, uh, a concept proof card. From, so when, uh, uh, I mean, most of the people here probably know this one before it was Return of the Jedi, it was Revenge of the Jedi. And this mock-up proof card is mixed media on paper, which was adhered to a card back for a different Star Wars action figure from Empire Strikes Back. There it is, 45 card back. Um, so before this was graded, I was able to handle handle this. And the, the, the papers, you can, it, it just, it, it was... Crudely made, but it was it was just made to to figure out how the the logo was going to be. There are a couple different examples of of this, but this is the first time anything like this has ever come to public auction. Um, one of my favorite Star Wars pieces in the entire auction. I, I think it's just uh, visually in, in, in incredible and so unique because you've, you're you're so used to the Return of the Jedi logo. We've seen it on everything. I mean, I've seen it probably ten thousand times now. Then this is just so jarring and weird and interesting and, and and also i love anything that gets you in the middle of the of the process of how things may have been what they could have been how they were created and anything like that is just fascinating so this is extremely rare from the gus lopez collection if anyone was talking about someone who's prolific in in the collecting world of pre-production star wars and props is it's gus <clears throat> he's been doing this for a very long time and not just a collector, you want to talk about a, a historian and an expert. Yes. The guy has an amazing amount of knowledge on the mm -hmm. Star Wars line. He has the uh, Star Wars archive website where it's similar to CAF, uh, where you can post your collection of pre-production and production toys. And it's, it's, it's an incredible archive of 
pretty much it's the most in-depth online archive of star wars pieces period um you'll note they'll note which collection they're from similar to calf mm -hmm. uh, so that's um anyway he started that and then this this piece came from his collection um, it's a site that sean rutan spends a lot of time on being such a big star wars toy huge fan. yeah he really that's probably where he is now <laughs> it, it, you know what uh, now that we're speaking out loud i think that's it yeah, that's where he's yeah. he, he he's not sick. He's just he's documenting his Ewoks. <laughs> but uh, no, this is a, an extremely special piece. Yeah, um, uh, I've heard nothing but mm. uh, great things from every all my collector friends. In, in yeah, the this is a it's a lot like the Elm Street. You know, where you're on the ground floor of this process yeah. of yeah, you know, absolutely what it, what it, very similar the origin of what it would become. So mm -hmm. yeah. And if you obviously the name changed and then the logo changed and then why they were going outside of the norm of i guess this was even prior to even ever having a return of the jedi logo because they, yeah. they didn't know so that's why this they had the carte blanche to go and do what they wanted um at at, at kenner which was just anyway it it looks as cool as it is it's, mm -hmm. it's even cooler in person so um that's at six thousand right, right? If you can't tell, encapsulated, yep. right? And and not graded, it's because, graded and yeah, it's right. encapsulated. It, 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 oh, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Authenticated, not graded, because it's right. it can't be graded, right? Yeah, they wouldn't grade this. Uh, it's uh, it's it's just it since it's taped together, it's something that they An original uh, art. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it's it's it needed to be encapsulated it, and and protected and 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 really just just for the archival sense. Um, Authenticated by CIB and Tom Derby, who's uh, no, he's the he's again the, another expert, right? right. The, the parallel the, knowledge, the trusted world of Star Wars goes is is Tom. So anyway, I could talk about this piece for a long time. It's very similar to the to the nightmare piece. This is uh, just an incredible piece of history. Oh, and it's uh, you have a ten to twenty thousand dollar value range on it and yep. it's six thousand right now with three bids um i'm sure they're chatting about this in you know facebook oh, yeah. group uh, star wars yeah. uh, collectors yeah. fans i mean that's that's the cool thing about anything you know related to the the star wars universe you're going to get people who are already collecting it and then you might get some other people who are just interested in star wars you know they're fans that have never gotten into the collectible side of things that are going to be interested mm -hmm. in seeing that, seeing this as well, because the historical significance of it. It's just, you know, this, this belongs on this show because this is original art. This was hand yeah. drawn, mm -hmm. hand drawn. So the bidding would go to the space station rather than to the moon. <laughs> Again, uh, Kevin, let, let me handle the jokes. Okay. Well, uh, see, I, know, I, I, got, I got a pity laugh at least on the, on the, on the <laughs> Uh, you did all right, Kelly. You did Thanks. all right. Um, now look at this thing. Come on, Godzilla's go kart for crying out loud! Godzilla just won a, won an Academy Award. Exactly, tonight, right? exactly. timely, right? Oscar winner. Uh, exactly. but seriously, so we, when we talked earlier about the the monster section, this comes from a collection that Kelly landed, the uh, Januzzi brothers, uh, who were how many brothers, Kelly? Three. Three that were as avid a collector of a type of item as any we've ever seen right. so their c collection of aurora models from the 60s and 70s is incredibly deep has one of almost everything and that includes this which is among the rarest of all aurora model kits they in the 60s after the monster series took off and the hot rides were a big deal and they were making models. They said, let's combine the two. So they did Dracula, Frankenstein, Wolfman, and Mummy originally in these kind of hot rod, go kart, you know, concept cars, whatever you want to say. Um, and then they added King Kong and Godzilla after that. But by that time, these were losing popularity, not selling well. They brought this line out. This didn't sell at all, essentially. We have offered thousands of Aurora models over our time since 1967. This is the very first example of this that we've ever had. As far as research goes and, and rarity, trying to find just 
examples of this box that aren't reproductions or polar lights, which is a, a, a reissue box, just finding images on the internet is hard of, of, an, of an authentic, real, original box, um, let alone finding one that's unused with the original cellophane, um, which was very carefully sliced and then, you know, it was put put back in. This is one of the rarest things we've ever yeah. offered. Yeah. Yeah. And almost every other model in this collection is 100% factory sealed. The collector who had this before they did just couldn't live without looking at the content. So while they did a meticulous job of slicing that and, and then putting it back in, it unfortunately is not totally factory sealed, but it, it displays as such because the shrink wrap goes right back on it. So we, sh we did a picture of it just to show the contents to assure yeah. everyone they were complete and untouched. But you're going to get it with that shrink wrap still on and in a plastic display case so that if you want to display it as that, as a sealed example, it certainly looks that way. Yeah. And Brian is on point name checking two of the others in the series. Good on you for that. Yeah. Yeah. I've never seen this one. <laughs> so that's... Uh, Not that's many have. Mm -hmm. Not many have even, let alone having it for auction. Not many have ever seen it. Yeah, no, and you can I, see already, you know, three bids, seventy five hundred. I mean, this this took took off within the first few hours of us going online. I think. Am mm -hmm. I right that that in both of the uh, model books that we have, it's not even shown because they could they didn't have an example to show. I think that's the case. Yeah. Yeah, they could show yeah. pretty much every other model in there, but they again, it's just yeah. There was a number thrown around of only five hundred made. Again, I that's something I may have heard. I'm not sure if it's true or not, but it's uh, a number that's since it's a very low number, but uh, it uh, anyway. But examples known in any state original, uh, you know, complete incomplete box. It, I don't think there's a dozen out there. Right. No, I don't and and so. as far as unused like this, uh, no, you know, there may be one or two me. still sealed. And then there's this and then there's it. it right. Yeah, it really is uh, top of the mountain as far as Roar models goes. And, and one of the the most sought after universal, well, I shouldn't say universal because it wasn't universal, but it was in the same line as the universal model kits. One of the top 60s monster items, period. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, this is, uh, this will be, you know, I'm, I'm curious <laughs> to see where it ends up. Cause again, I've never seen this thing before and I'm a Godzilla fan. You'd think you'd stumble across uh, something on, on the internet, so I, you know, while you're doing searches and things, but uh, wow, this yeah, this like... is this is that rare. This, I mean, that that um, we've now given the internet images that haven't been on there because mm -hmm. it's that rare. Well, now we're ending with a uh, uh, a set, right? Of uh, correct, well, of, uh, I, I'll let Kelly characters. Yeah, you know? I'll let Kelly talk on this. I just threw this in because I know a lot of comic fans and certainly animated animation fans. Hold a special place for the Lord of the Rings animated series that these figures are based on. Mm -hmm. Having said that, as many of that might have liked that series, certainly did not not go out and buy this line of action figures because it's incredibly rare, and rarely do you ever see all of them offered at one time. Yeah, there. This is the first time we've ever had them all at one time. Uh, this had, we we had one time where they were, I believe, opened uh, yeah. nicely opened, similar to the. But the, never all, never sealed. In this never quality. Like no, and this is this is uh, this one in particular. Um, his little horn on top of his head um, usually pokes right through the blister, and this one doesn't even have a mark, a dent, anything. So I had to put a giant note on it. It says, "Do not shake. Do not bump. Do not yeah. touch. Basically, don't don't touch it. Don't don't even move it if you don't have to. It's it, don't it, poke the ring wrath." <laughs> Don't vote your ring wraith ever. Um, so this one, Frodo's horse, the ring wraith horse, the, they're they're those are the top three as far as rarity. Uh, Charger, yeah, he's uh, also very rare. Uh, the people just didn't buy them; they they fell off the card. They they didn't last. They just it wasn't a popular toy line, like Alex said. They people may have loved the animated the animation, but they didn't love the toys at yeah. the time. Um, and just nice card art on each one too, unique yeah. to that character. You know, this almost has a Frazetta look to the. Yes, right. Yeah, I'd love to see the original art for that. That would be very cool. Mm -hmm. That would, yeah. 
um, but the you know, the the pieces are. This is another one that that um, which which happened with this one. Is his hat notoriously pokes right through the blister, which it did here. A li very little, very little. It's still a nice example at an AFA seventy plus, but it still happened. So um, again, it wasn't supposed to make it last. It wasn't supposed mm -hmm. to last for more than a month, if that yeah. two months, and then it's supposed to be you know torn off and played with, which most of them were. So um, yeah, they are rare. Yeah. Oh, cool. And this is the complete set. There were no other. Uh, nope. no. That is it. Yeah. And this is it too, right? No play sets or no other accessories, That's like it. a lot of different lines. They they yeah. had the figures and it didn't take off and it never went any further. That's it. Yeah. They, uh, they're similar to the, you know, that it was, it, it could have been as close to the tribes that we have in the auction now that mm -hmm. that entire line that almost got made and never got made. Well, you know, it also didn't help that for toy geeks out there, Knickerbocker was not a big name in action figures. So had this been Kenner or Hasbro or someone else, maybe they had a different push and it, it made it, but Knickerbocker just wasn't an action figure name. You know, that goes back to the the thirties with Disney dolls and things. So. Right. right. Uh, and they were also competing with star Wars and seven. Sure. So yeah. At that time it was there. They, I think they thought they could do what star Wars was doing mm -hmm. and that did not happen because they were, they were not as a you know, once, once Star Wars hit, it was years before another action figure line really had much success because it was everybody was buying Star Wars. Yeah, mm -hmm. 82 G.I. Joe started, and that mm -hmm. was the next one, but that was you know, yeah. so they Star Wars had a good five year run where it was way top of the mountain. Yeah, yeah, great set. Great, set. I hope one person can, can get them all, but there'll be some fights, there'll be some serious <laughs> fights. I would imagine, but that's what uh, that's what makes auctions fun to watch, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, uh, three of us are at home, Alex. You're the only one still at work. Sorry to say, <laughs> but uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's okay. It, he, he will not forget. Oh no, <laughs> no, no. He's I could, the, uh, he's the I, elephant. I may do other shows from home, and you can see my. You know, I got lots of comments. Cool. At, Oh, we actually about the record collection and stuff, mm -hmm. but I really wanted to have these two pieces on display. And, and I'm not that far. It's not a big deal. So, uh, but yes, my, my dedication is not lost on the man upstairs, and that would be Mr. Steve Jeppy. So, yes. The That's other right. two guys he, here. He tunes you know. into this thing on the rerun. He'll know that he knows <laughs> you were the one here that uh, we're really putting in the extra time. Yes, and mm -hmm. Steve, we trust. Yes. I'm yeah. sorry. And, and, and Alex, we trust. I don't know what to say. No, here. no, no. Steve. <laughs> yes, sir, Steve. Very true. Well, listen, I, I, you know, the auction ends. Uh, well, it's a lot of the collectibles and uh, other memorabilia and things begin ending on Tuesday, I believe, of next week. Is that right? Tuesday um, will be the first session of the catalog auctions are always the historical content. Yep. So we'll have political. We've got advertising, sports, uh, war memorabilia, that kind of stuff. And then the 20th, Wednesday, that will be the comic books, the original art, all the toys, action figures, concert posters. So, yeah, it's over a two-day period, both days. Bidding starts to close at 9 p.m. Eastern. So, we, more of the serious collectibles on uh, Tuesday, and then the, the fun pop culture collectibles um, on mm -hmm. Wednesday. Correct. Yeah, yeah makes perfect sense. Um, so, all right, well, listen, obviously we'll be running some PR for you, be, you know, in the lead up to that. And I'll be watching some of the, these auctions as well, just to see where they end up. I'm curious about a few of them as uh, I'm sure all of you are as well. So, um, as always, you know, I love getting to hang out with you guys. We, we need to do this more often. You, you need to talk to uh, your boss and see if you can wedge in maybe one more, uh, you know, auction a year if possible. No, let's go with two. <laughs> all right yep okay all right yes. yep. yeah we've said enough now right it's time to go so, no so that's a good segue how do we do more auctions well you people more out time. there consign to us i can't do go. another that catalog a year i can't do it no. yes, you can't no, but seriously, uh you know we're already like i said earlier we're we're working on the mate online auction and mm -hmm. that's the more we again we say collector friendly a lot of that stuff is in the one to five hundred dollar range and that can be political and art and, and comics and toys. And But we're also working on the July. Which that'll be our next catalog premiere auction. Mm -hmm. That's the one that we will be promoting at San Diego Comic-Con. Kelly will be there with Kevin with our 
booth full of items. So if you want to be part of that lineup, reach out to us at Hakes at Hakes.com. Um, we're happy to talk consignments any day of the week. Kelly, you want to add something there? No, you pretty much said it all. We're open for, you know, email me at, at mkelly at Hakes.com. Give me a call. Email uh, the Hakes at Hakes.com if you can't remember that. So we're we're open for, we have plenty of room for more original art, plenty of room for comic books, um, more props. As my number one Marvel fan has said, there might be some props coming up. So just stay tuned for that. Um, And then we'd love to have your great pieces to have on display at different Comic Cons. San Diego is our, you know, is ends the week, it's the week right before the auction ends. It's great timing to have things on display. We had we, last year we had a beautiful 9.6 Amazing Spider-Man number one. Love to have another. So record record setting in that grade. Absolutely. Yeah, mm-hmm. we'd love to have another. So bring it on. Fantastic. Well, uh, again, Hakes.com is the website for the auction. And if you're con- and if you have consignment questions, like they said, you can hit them up through there as well. Sure. Uh, as always, so uh, it's fun. Uh, you know, we got to. I, I, okay, we don't need to do this any more often during the year, but uh, but we definitely need to figure out ways to you know hang out at a different show. I'm not. I might be going to San Diego this year, but uh, hmm. I assume Kelly, you're going. Todd, you too. I'm there. Kelly, I'm Just going. Kelly? There. All right, well, yeah, Kelly, and Kevin. Kelly and Kevin. Kelly and Kelly. Kelly and Kevin. All right. Well, and another pin set, I imagine. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 yeah we got to get that designed. That's right. Thank you for the reminder. Not a problem. <laughs> I've got I've got two of the sets, so I, yeah, you got I need a third now. Right I'm gonna take care. I'm gonna stay tonight. And take care, but I'll get the buttons done. Don't you guys don't worry about it. Good. I got, I got, it, covered. <laughs> I got it covered. Wonderful. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, it's fun as always, and uh, we appreciate everybody hanging out in the chat with us. Uh, you know, it's yeah, it, thanks everybody. We all love talking about this stuff. So thank you so much, and yeah. uh, have a good evening. We'll see you again.